I will go ahead and call the City of Essex Junction City Council meeting for Wednesday, February 8th to order. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I have a couple of agenda additions or changes, but does anybody else have anything? Yes. Raj, you want to go first? Yeah, I just want to pull the minutes out of consent and make them 6D. Okay. Did anybody else have any other agenda additions or changes? Uh, I wanted to add two emails, one from Elaine Haney and one from Harlem Smith to the reading file. So with no other changes, I would entertain the motion to amend the agenda as presented, or to amend the agenda. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Can I make a comment? Please. There's been some discussion around um, how we order our agenda items, and I think I've heard from some people about that equating our that order equating to how we value that topic and i just want to say that more often than not the way we order these things has to do with staff that might have to participate in the meeting and getting them in and out of the meeting as quickly as possible so they can go on with their evening that is often the primary concern or if we expect public comment to have that public comment like an issue like the public hearing tonight to be first so people can come and participate and then leave uh, if they choose to. So I really hope that folks don't look at our, our agendas and then see them as a value statement uh, or equate them as to how important we think those, those topics are. Um, and I'm specifically discussing the, um, the discussion last meeting about stipends and the discussion about moving the, the meeting because it interfered with Passover. So I just wanted to make that statement. There is nothing to how we do this except for practical logistical considerations. So thanks for that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I don't I don't think in general we talked about those kinds of things as to how that happens. So I, I appreciate that, Rosh. Thank you. Motions on the table has been seconded. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Suppose say nay. Great. So that passed unanimously. And that will move into public to be heard. So this is the portion of tonight's meeting where if there are any members of the public who wish to bring something to the board's attention that is not on the agenda, then now is the time to do so. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns related to the budget or anything else on our agenda, please wait until that time. Otherwise, does anybody have anything else? Just Amber. Go ahead, Arlen. Hi, thank you. I think I talked to you guys once about this before last year. Um, and I'm not really sure how much you can do about it, but I'm going to continue to bring it up. Lori Holton um, thankfully reached out to me and has given me the opportunity to testify in front of the government ops committee about our military being able to vote from overseas. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to get that opportunity to go out there uh, next week or, or join into that meeting and be able to testify on behalf of our military overseas. Um, I think a lot of people may know my son, one of them. Um, I have two in the military, one's deployed the majority of the time. Doesn't live here and doesn't vote here anymore, but the other one does. Um, he was pretty upset that when he was deployed that his, um, the, the hoops that he has to jump through in order to try to get his ballot back here to get his vote counted, um, that was, it's impossible. It, it's never gonna happen. Um, his vote didn't count. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what the state is putting together. Lori believes that um, in state elections that they're, that they're going to be able to change something. I guess there's a bill out there where they believe overseas militaries will have enough time or I'm not sure what it is, but I'm gonna pay attention and I'm gonna be back here to talk to you guys about it because local is definitely different. Mm -hmm. um, I just recently took out a loan and did everything online. Never saw anybody on the yeah. bank, signed a bunch of papers. I'm legally bound by that. Um, the fact that our military, who could be sitting out in a forward operating base, could should be able to vote on a cell phone. Yeah. Um, and the fact that we insist on paper and snail mail in today's day and age drives me insane. Um, and I'm not going to be quiet about it. Uh, and as you can tell, I'm probably a little emotional about it. Um, it our vote's sacred and for those that are in the military, a lot of them are our first responders. Um, they should be able to vote and we shouldn't put barriers in their way to get their vote back here. So thank you. Thank you, Harlan. Great. Check that. 
Uh, I do apologize to those on the on Zoom worlds. When I looked up at our big screen, I only see a town meeting TV and Amber on the screen. Now that I'm logged in, I see that there are other people who are attending. Um, and I see that RSM, you do have your hand up. So please go ahead and uh, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you. This is Risa Marin on Countryside Drive. I have a procedural question. Um, items that are under the reading file and not an actual agenda item, do they get public to be heard also? Or should we ask any questions or comments now? Uh, those would not be discussed again at this meeting. So if you do have a question or comment on those, then now would be a great time. Thank you for, that, thank you. for asking that question. Thank you, this will be fast. In terms of something like a uh, stipend increase for city council, that is not through an amendment, that is simply something that the council agrees to or doesn't and then adds to the budget. Uh, so with a, with a question on this, so the question is about the process of the stipends that are in the budget? I, I read through all the, the reading file and memos and in, in Raj's memo, he says that he requests that the council add the stipend and an in, a yearly inflation increase to the budget. My question is, as taxpayers, the only say we have in that is yes or no on budget. And that's not something that is as an amendment, the council can choose their um, their stipend payment without any input from us? It's a good question. It's all it's a crossover topic, if you will, that will apply to a few different parts of today's meeting. Um, I'll just address it now since you've asked it now. Uh, so for our the stipend for city councilors, with it being a part of the budget, the best time to express a comment concern of either the amount and or the process would be during the public hearing that we are about to have. Uh, as well as when we talk about it afterwards as a city council, uh, I will ask for public comment again at that point in time. And that can be another opportunity to influence what that decision would be. Once the city council approves of the budget, it then goes out to the voters. And at that point in time, the only uh, opportunity that the voters have to agree or disagree with anything in the budget is to either vote for or against the budget. Okay, thank you. So it's not something that is done through amendment. Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Use the amendment. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, concerns about things that are not on the agenda? I'm not seeing other hands up on Zoom. I'm not seeing any hands up in the room. So we will go ahead and close that portion of the meeting and jump into the public hearing on the fiscal year 2024 budget, uh, proposed budget and capital program. And as we transition into this topic, I just want to go over a couple of things. Uh, first off, the public hearing is a time for the council to hear from the community uh, on questions, comments, concerns relating to the fiscal year 2024 budget, which is what funds the city and activities beginning July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2024. Only questions or comments that pertain to the budget and the activities that would happen during that time period are what should happen at that time. Questions that do not pertain to either the budget or the activities for this upcoming fiscal year uh, would not, or I would call, uh, I would ask that that not happen at this point in time. And if I hear those, I will ask that you please end that, that uh, topic and go to the next one. If you're unsure whether your question is appropriate for the time, please ask me uh, and I'll be happy to answer that. Uh, in a few moments, staff will present the budget as it currently stands. I would ask that everybody hold your questions until the end of the presentation. I will ask for public comment once the presentation is done and we'll ask for people to raise their hand so that I know how many people would like to speak. Comments that are made in the chat on Zoom are not a part of the public record and are not considered public input and are not considered part of the public hearing. So please don't use the chat feature. I do not wanna set time limits, but I will if somebody appears to be taking time away from others who do wish to speak. So please be mindful of everybody else who will want to speak and that each person will get one turn. And as I sort of just mentioned, the fiscal year 2024 budget is not finalized. And so we may make changes at this or future city council meetings. But now is that point in time uh, where if the community wants to influence what is in the budget, now is how you do that. So with that, Regina. All right, let me share my screen. Get this going. Oh. 
All right. Uh, so I'm going to move us through here. Um, these are some of the highlights, but these are actually mentioned again on the next slide. So I'm just going to get us right here to the next slide. Um, so essentially, as we have talked about a few times through the process of developing the FY24 budget for the city, um, we don't have a great budget to compare to. Uh, there is the village budget, and you can see that summarized in uh, the budget documents that are um, in the packet. Um, and uh, what we are actually showing a comparison to here on this slide is to the FY22 mock city budget that was prepared. So that was prepared contemplating that there would um, what a city the city would look like on its own. Um, and since that was done two years ago, we applied an 8% inflation to that FY22 mock budget. Um, there's uh, been points in time when the village budget went up closer to 6% from one year to the next, uh, and we're in a pretty high inflationary period right now. So that 8% over a two year time frame uh, is pretty conservative. Um, the budget uh, that you've got in front of you right now um, for FY24 is uh, 11 million, 428, uh, 241. Um, and that is a 7% change over that inflationary mock budget. Um, if you were to look at just the village budget itself in FY23, that's a $6 million budget. So there is quite a bit of change from that. Um, but part of the reason is under today's budget, a lot of things happen over at the town. We've got to uh, get those incorporated over here into this budget. Then what you also see on this slide are a number of things that are um, they're contributing factors, but really they're new items brought to the table uh, over what was contemplated in that FY22 mock budget. Um, so there are new positions identified um, in as an admin assistant in the administration department um, to community development uh, department staff an adult programming staff at EJRP to accommodate the um, adult programming once the relationship with the town on the senior services ends at the end of December. Um, and we've got some shifts to try to accommodate um, some, it's not a new position, but shifting uh, duties to cover buildings um, services. The stormwater amount, uh, for the most part, that work was covered in the town budget, so we are accommodating that now uh, to meet our um, permit requirements on the city side. Um, Essex Rescue, those costs are, this is not new, but the costs have gone up, so that's the dollar amount of the increase. Um, Essex Junction Cemetery Association, that's the increased um, cost uh, for maintenance of the cemeteries. Um, there's a shift um, in the programming uh, of the Memorial Day in July 4th to the general fund, considering the importance of those as community celebrations. And then there's the uh, planned annual increase to the capital transfer because we've got a, um, uh, we do an excellent job here in the city preparing for capital projects going forward. And so that helps, helps maintain that. Um, okay, so, the other comparison um, here on this slide is showing what folks actually pay for taxes in fiscal year 23 uh, combined between what you're paying town taxes and village taxes. Uh, the proposed tax rate is uh, moving up 1.4%. Um, so essentially uh, the um, amount that you would pay in property taxes for an average $280,000 home under this proposed budget would go up $37.51. And I do want to point out that, that this is a slight change from what's in the packet. We had included an older dollar amount. So that $37.51 is slightly lower than what was in the packet. Um, uh, let me just check here. Um, so what I think is important to point out here when that FY22 mock city budget was prepared, um, there was a contemplation that 
it was possible that when the city separates, there will be a six to eight percent tax rate decrease. So that is is not what we're showing here. It's not what's proposed. It's a one point four percent tax rate increase, and much of that is because of those new contributing factors on the on the previous slide. Um, if you add those up, that's about six hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars. A hundred thousand dollars roughly equates to one percent tax rate increase. So um, you can see that. Uh, difference there, um, as well as just acknowledging that we're two years further down down the road here. Other thing to point out, um, we also identified through the budgeting process that there's a couple of things that really are, are necessary now um, that the city is the city. Um, and these are one-time expenditures. We wouldn't anticipate that these we would do these consistently from year to year. Um, through the preparation of the budget, um, we started with these in the general fund and we moved them over um, to the local option tax fund uh, to try to keep the general fund down. A um, couple of things to point out about this. Uh, we don't yet know what the local option tax revenue is yet. This tax was started in October. We have gone through a full quarter of that collection. Um, and we won't know uh, from the state exactly what that number is. I believe we have they have 75 days to tell us that. So hopefully we'll find out in March. Um, other thing, just want to point out for folks um, that the uh, we are talking about a number of different components of the city budget tonight. What you actually vote on is the general fund budget. These other pieces are in here for information. So the local option tax, the economic development fund, the capital budgets, the enterprise budgets, um, those don't have an impact on the property tax. And so they aren't um, a part of that budget that you're voting on come April. So over the next couple of slides, I'm just gonna talk through um, some of the highlights and changes um, from each department. Uh, again, in comparison back to that FY22 mock budget. Um, and again, all of this detail is in the is up on the website and it's in the council packet following this presentation if you want to look at it for more detail. Um, okay, so administration uh, department. So there is in the FY24 budget, there is a, a new position for an administrative assistant. Um, and um, the just going to point out that there's a, a couple of different um, new positions. And so essentially, when we get to those in these departments, I'm going to point, point them out. Um, there are positions that will also happen in July. Um, as an example, in the clerk's office, uh, there is a new clerk assistant that will start. That has been contemplated for quite some time. It's in the FY22 mock budget. Um, they are all pieces that uh, were assumed and understood when the city became a city. These were additional positions that would need to be added. Um, so that isn't necessarily called out here because it's not new in comparison to that mock budget. So, uh, just to try to clarify that. I know it's muddy and apologize for that, but. Um, so legislative, it's just a new expense category. A lot of those expenses used to be in the administrative budget. We're calling that out distinctly for the city council. Um, in the finance uh, department, there are um, three staff in the um, admin, in the FY24 budget. Again, these, when it was contemplated about the separation from the town, it was expected that there would need to be three finance staff on both sides. Uh, these positions are already in place. They're not new for FY24, but they're uh, showing up in the budget at that point. Um, what else? Uh, also, information technology. This is a new expense category for the city, so it didn't, uh, didn't exist in the village budget before. All of the current IT expenses are covered by the town currently. Uh, this spring, we will have to actively um, separate from the town and have an IT budget um, for the city moving forward. Um, those numbers are, are fairly rough, uh, but we are getting closer to understanding what those costs might look like. 
Assessing. Um, these expenses, uh, they were previously in the town budget. Um, I will point out that assessing is one of two departments that we will continue to um, have a relationship and shared with the town moving forward. Um, uh, for the assessing department, that plan is in place through, um, I think it's FY25 when the reappraisal is finished. And at that point, we'll reconsider what that, uh, what that looks like. Under community development department, um, there is the addition of a full-time code enforcement enforcement officer and a full-time planner. Um, and uh, currently we have a separate health officer um, position, that's a stipend position. Um, these two positions would, we would incorporate the health officer into the, these roles. Um, code enforcement is in to um, try to address long-term concerns about code enforcement in the city, as well as the potential of a re new rental registry um, program, uh, which would have a revenue source associated with it if we um, put that into place. Um, and the planner is intended to try to um, prepare for possible new committees. Uh, there are a number of committee functions that happen over on the town side, um, and we'll have to uh, we're prepared to take on some of those duties here on the city side as well. Um, I think everything else on this uh, slide is fairly um, straightforward, nothing to call out specifically. Um, health and human services. Um, so this is a pretty, dollar-wise, this is a pretty big um, section of the budget. Uh, this is where Essex Rescue is, and this is also where the De Essex Police Department is. So this is, Essex Police Department is the second department that is intended to be shared with the town moving forward. We're in a 10-year agreement right now to maintain that relationship going forward. Um, in the county and regional functions, you'll see um, the membership fees uh, for Green Mountain Transit and for the Winooski Valley Park District. Um, uh, to become members of those organizations as the voters approved in November 2022. Um, again, these, um, these fees were in the town budget. We were just paying for them through that budget. Now we will need to pay for them separately on our own on the city side. Um, then the public, uh, public Works Streets budget, you can start to see just the uh, reality of the increased costs in supplies. Um, and, and maintenance of those services going forward. Stormwater. Uh, previously in the village side on the stormwater budget, there uh, was a portion of one full-time employee and there's the salary and the benefits to cover that, uh, those expenses. Um, but the, um, the, um, rest of that program and how to run that program we needed to incorporate on the city side so we can um, we can meet our permit requirements so that's what you've got in there uh, for the library budget um, that is including an increase in the part-time staffing so we can get to um, four staff on each shift for um, safety needs and then with a lot more access to digital materials um, and increased budget for um, high demand collection of digital digital services. Um, there's also um, increased furniture, ec increased expense for replacing furniture to get to more wipeable surfaces. This is a, again, post COVID uh, world. We're just trying to keep things um, clean and as hygienic as possible. Uh, EJRP, recreation program. Um, so they, this program has the same amount of full-time employees that we've seen that they've had in the past. Um, there are a few changes and shifts in the um, funding for the Memorial Day program and the July 4th program. Um, under parks and facilities, this is uh, where we have shifted duties to try to pick up some um, uh, definite needs in building coordination. Um, I will say that this um, is an experiment and hope that we can accommodate the needs for this, this work in FY24 with existing staff. Uh, we may in the future have to um, accommodate that with a different full-time, um, new full-time staff, but that's not what we're proposing at this, this point in time. Um, 
so, and then we've got the new adult programming line. So again, we we have uh, talked about this quite a bit with the um, with the council through the process so far, but. At Dece in December 2023, the um, agreement with the town to manage the senior programming and senior van uh, will end. Um, and we are trying to accommodate some of that um, uh, change with a new adult program director starting in jo January 1 um, to be able to do some more uh, senior programming as well as other adult programming. Um, we have also included in the budget $20,000, assuming that without the senior van, um, our SSTA usage might go up. Um, that is a use-based fee, so we will get charged the actual amount. Um, and so we're just trying to prepare for what that extra amount might be. Uh, for debt, um, you'll see the city's share of the police facility debt um, in buildings generally uh, across the board. Uh, you see we're uh, working to get the cleaning services now under one contract um, and uh, just uh, really have identified some repair and maintenance needs um, that have been ongoing for quite some time and really trying to put some effort towards um, getting our buildings in good shape. And of course, we will be doing a renovation of two Lincoln, which will be quite quite a big effort. Um, also, some of the uh, budget has increased for expenses at two Lincoln because for a number of years, we've had uh, maybe one person here working and we've got quite a few more people working here now, um, which I think Terry's probably pretty happy about. Um, okay, so I have uh, jabbered on for long enough here and Jess is going to take over from here. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, so the capital funds that you see on your on your screen now, uh, two of these funds are funded with general fund dollars, and the rest are um, enterprise fund. Uh, sorry, three of these funds are funded with enterprise fund or general fund dollars. The rest are enterprise funds. So the first three capital reserve, the rolling stock fund, and the EJRP capital all come from general fund dollars. And these are transfers that are mentioned within um, the general fund budget itself. So the capital reserve fund uh, and rolling stock are based on plans that have been in place for a number of years now. Um, capital also is reviewed by the capital committee. So we haven't made, although the capital committee did not meet um, prior to this budget process, we didn't make any changes to that plan. Um, we'll be doing those going forward. We'll be picking that committee work back up. Um, so the plans that you see in the packet are essentially the plans that have existed for a couple of years now and project out. I think um, it's summer five-year plans and summer eight-year plans. So the projects are listed here. Um, again, EJRP capital is also something that is transferred from the general fund dollars. And every year EJRP provides us, they, they essentially get um, one penny on the tax rate uh, uh, assigned to them each year. And they come up with their plan um, to use that funding accordingly. Uh, the water, wastewater and sanitation capital are all enterprise fund budgets. So they're here, um, these do not affect, affect the tax rate, uh, but they are here just for informational purposes at this point. Um, the enterprise fund budgets, again, uh, no tax dollars are used to support any of these uh, enterprise funds. Um, again, it's just informational for um, residents and voters. So the EJRP program fund provides all of the programming, um, Maple Street school, the parks and programs, preschools, the licensed child care and after school care, vacation camps and summer day camps and the like. Um, they are all self-funded by revenue that they bring in. It's basically fees for services. Uh, the water, wastewater and sanitation funds um, are all supported by user fees for anyone who is on those systems. 
So the next, we'll talk about those increases um, on these funds. So there, uh, the wastewater treatment facility is continuing to face challenges with um, state regulations and, and unfunded mandates that are getting passed through. Uh, we also are seeing a significant impact from inflation on the wastewater treatment facility for supplies and materials. Um, and we have also entered into a new contract uh, last this fiscal year actually for um, technical services so that our pump station communications um, are communicating back to uh, our wastewater facility and also are accessible remotely for staff. Um, hopefully we will see uh, a decrease in the amount that staff needs to come on site to address issues off hours and uh, they'll be able to address these things remotely going forward. We also have an addition to the water fund for the Main Street water line bond that was approved last annual meeting. Um, and the most significant impact to all three of these enterprise funds is the administrative fee increase. Um, partly due to increased costs, but also as a result of the FY23 rate increases um, were not fully realized in FY23. The rates were reduced um, to kind of soften the impact on rate payers. But effectively, this is making us realize two years worth of increases in one fiscal year being FY24. So the impact of all of that on the rates is projected here. Again, these are preliminary numbers. So we will have um, final data that comes in and these rates will be reviewed. Um, budgets will be updated in uh, April, May timeframe. Right now, the impact we're projecting is overall an 8.47% increase or about $49.62 per year on the average residential property using 120 gallons of water per day. All right, thank you, Jess. Uh, yep. So that that's it for our presentation. So I can stop sharing. Great. Jess, Regina, thank you so much. Uh, so again, this is a public hearing, so this is a point in time where if there are uh, questions or comments, concerns from members of the public, please uh, raise your hand and let me know, both using Teams as well as in the room, if there's anybody who has any questions, comments, concerns. Harlan, kick it off. I'm assuming you won't have to. Please come on up so that way everybody can hear you. Uh, Aaron Smith, Seneca Avenue. Uh, just a quick question. Um, the, right, uh, so on the revenue end, um, something I've never dove into, and I thought about it actually on the way to the meeting tonight. And I was curious um, if our fees, so building permits, uh, we're now going to be doing dog licensing, um, which used to be within the town, so on and so forth. Do those rates um, follow the consumer price index? Do we? continually increase those to compensate for, I mean, those fees are generally to pay for the um, administrative services to maintain those. Um, we know that dogs tend to pose a huge burden to our police department on a lot of issues um, and take up a lot of resources. So I was just curious if you, if you knew of those fees um, increasing yearly, like the budget does, mm -hmm. um, or if that's kind of an afterthought, and we take a look at them and we raise them only occasionally. Some of those fees, so the fees such as dog licensing, marriage licensing, those types of things that are overseen by the clerk are set in state statute, and we have zero control over or the ability to change. Okay. Um, so that that one's a no. Uh, in terms of our buildings, though, uh, those types of, of land development types of fees, those are within the control of, of our municipality and we can change. Uh, we had a request a few years ago to change, to increase those rates as we are at the very low end. Um, and again, I believe this year we've also made a, a request to increase those rates so that way we can better align with what the rest of the developed county and developed parts of the state uh, have. So we, we have looked at those, sure. Great, thank you, appreciate yep. it. Absolutely. Thank you, Harlan. Diane? Sure. Um, 
my first question is, is how much time is left to pay for the police department bill? How many more years do we have to go? I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, if you don't mind, if I if we can't get that quickly, I'll have to email you that one. Um, being that I'm on the, the planning commission, being the adding an additional planner is of interest. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't aware we were going in that direction because we uh, discussed the planning commission that we were adding a planner. Uh, we did talk about uh, code enforcement, of course, um, and health officer and that sort of thing. So yeah. this is. Um, can you tell me more about adding a planner? Because yeah. We just hired a community development director. In part, it's the community development department, as you well know, has basically been uh, overseen by two FTEs, one really the big picture stuff, and then another uh, to help with some of the day-to-day -day logistics. This is in some ways to help with that uh, differentiation of duties between those helping to encourage development and then those enforcing the ordinances that we have as well as intentionally trying to enforce the ordinance side. So that's a part of the uh, the ordinance enforcement officer. With a planner, another part of that is we've had conversations about should we have a uh, an energy committee? Our housing commission, we're likely going to be separating into a, a junction commission. Um, we've talked about cr uh, creating some other committees which are escaping my head at this point in time. Uh, and so somebody needs to staff those. Uh, otherwise, we have people who are going to be very well intentioned and impassioned, and we need to make sure there's a communication loop back to the municipality uh, with that. Um, so that's part of the thought. Okay. So my last question is, is I noticed there was a citywide building coordinator that was under EJRP. Mm -hmm. I know that we had had someone when we were contemplating merger with the town who is, who is responsible for buildings. Would this person be doing that sort of evaluation activity or what would they be doing? Regina, do you want to talk more to their day-to-day -day or? Sure. Um, yeah, so the uh, work has been pretty significant between the number of different buildings that we have. So uh, there was a good facility study done with that effort with the town on the fire department. Um, the public works building and the recreation buildings. Um, the uh, what we've seen more so than that is needing somebody to manage the roof replacement at the library, needing to help manage uh, the um, renovation of this building and proper maintenance of this building that hasn't been done for quite some time. Um, looking at the uh, um, things that need to be done over at Park Street School, like sprinkling. Um, the windows need to be replaced. There's just a number of things in our buildings that we um, just haven't been able to figure out or really stay on top of. Um, there are different cleaning contracts in each building and that creates a lot of inefficiencies and cost. Um, so that's the, uh, that's what um, we've been trying to accommodate with current staff on how to, how to manage that and see if we can get through that work um, with who we have now um because some of these are construction projects and when they're done they're they will be done um so it's it's definitely experimental in terms of whether we can continue down this road and and accom accommodate what the needs that we have okay so it's, it's to accommodate current needs and this person may or may not continue depending on how uh, things play out yeah or we might need a find that we might need a full-time position. Okay. So this is a start somewhere, see how it goes. Yeah. And decide as we go. Being agile. Okay. Well, hey, I know there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this bill. Yeah, you do. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Uh, I see some hands up. Um, and... I do have an answer. Oh, great. Thank you. We will be pay paying for the police facility through FY34. I would have been off by a year. I'm happy I didn't guess. <laughs> Thank you, Regina. Uh, so we'll go into Zoom land next. Uh, John Willie, I see your hands up. The floor is yours. Yes, hi. Thanks. Thanks very much. And uh, thanks to everybody for the work done so far. 
Uh, great, great job. Uh, I'd like to weigh in um, on some of the, the senior items that were mentioned. Uh, while I'm technically actually able to take advantage of them, I'm more speaking for uh, so, some others that are using it now and love the senior center and um, the the, the uh, offerings that they have. And anything to expand those, I noticed a, a full-time person for the senior center, that, that would be awesome uh, to expand uh, what's what's going on now because I really think you know we should take care of our seniors and uh, and keep them independent and uh, part of that is the, the the services of the Essex senior van now uh, have been uh, have been great in, in maintaining their independence and uh, abilities to get to appointments and all that kind of thing and and I'm just curious if it if the city doesn't have its own resource and it uses SSTA would, <clears throat> from what I understand, a lot of SSTA, I mean, it needs to be part of a medical appointment or something like that. Whereas the Essex senior van really can be used for anything that that senior needs to go to as far as appointments or groceries or going to the senior center or whatever. So Anyway, I, I'm just love, love to weigh in on that and and uh, and encourage anything we can do to take care of our seniors. We should do it. Um, that's my input. Thank you, John. Um, just a couple of, of things to your your comments slash questions uh, with the senior with the the adult services director that position. Um, that is not one FTE that's going to be dedicated 100% to senior programming but to adult programming. A portion of that will absolutely be senior services. Uh, and we have talked about how our desire is to maintain a senior center so that that way the seniors can have the, that type of socialization, that type of peer interaction. Uh, one of the things that is glaringly evident from the pandemic is around social isolation in the senior population. And so we, we want to help be a, a resource and um, an advocate to help fix and resolve some of those issues. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that, that bit of right. semantic. Um, and then with the, the senior van, uh, we are in this budget would not be supporting the senior van beyond the Essex senior van beyond, uh, the end of this current calendar year, which is when our agreement with the town of Essex would end. The usage that we have from that, from Essex junction residents is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, less than 10 individuals per month utilize the service within a given month. Uh, the cost of tens of thousands of dollars for less than a handful of people is just something that, when we've talked about this, does not seem to make fiscal sense. Um, there are going to be some barriers with going to SSTA, but from trying, but from thinking about that uh, fiscal responsibility side, it seemed like that made the most sense. Yeah, and I'll just clarify that there are um, uh, the list of city residents that are. Um, signed up to use the bus is a list that's uh, over 100 people long, but it's the, it's the usage of how many people are actually taking trips in each week that um, really were helpful in our decision-making factor in terms of the cost of providing that service. Um, also, uh, just wanna add that um, SSTA does, um, becoming eligible for SSTA does mean that um, you need a doctor approval that you uh, can't walk to the fixed route service. Uh, so that's the limitation. Um, but once you, uh, if you are eligible for that, um, there's no limit on um, when you can use it, how often you can use it um, in terms of the per person usage of it and where, where they will take you. Because a part of that is also the the hours and days of the week that SSTA is available well surpasses that of the Essex senior van. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Regina. Thank you. That's good to know. Great. Uh, so then, Andy Suntup, your hand is up. I'm, hopefully I didn't mispronounce your last name. Hi. It was a good presentation, thorough, but you went way too fast for some of us non-financial people to understand. Um, I believe that when we separated, most people voted to do that based on saving money as opposed to staying with the town. 
So I have two questions. Um, one, is this budget within the parameters of what was told to us when we discussed separation? If not, how much additional is it? And two, how much money are we actually saving compared to if we stayed with the town and paid two taxes? And since you don't know the value of my house, you could express that in percentage points. In reverse order to your questions, I don't have the slightest idea if we were to um, have stayed with the town because that entity's budget that would be proposed for this upcoming fiscal year, like what we are doing, does not exist anymore. Similarly, the village of Essex Junction, there was no budget exercise to plan out what that budget would have been. So there is no known as to what that would have would have been. Um, in terms of uh, increases for this year, compared to what was in the mock budget that was developed as a part of separation, uh, I believe that what is in there that was not either known or new, and there's a distinction there, uh, is on slide, what slide is this? Slide three of the presentation or page four of our packet, which shows 353,000 in salary and benefits, uh, 119,000 in stormwater, 71,000 from Essex Rescue, 20,000 from the Essex Junction Cemetery Association, 17,500 from the Memorial Day Parade, and 80,000 uh, 80, in capital transfer, that would have been planned. So that, was a, that would have been a known. So whatever those numbers add up to be, that would be approximately what would be different from what was proposed to now. The other thing that was not known is this giant inflation that we are experiencing at this point in time, uh, which is approximately seven to eight percent on our operations of costs. Uh, that also was not known at the point in time of developing the mock budget. All right. Um, do you have a gut feeling, you know, knowing um, the finances of the town and uh, the city? if we really are coming out ahead by being separated? Gut feeling. Gut feeling, yes, as well as in the city, what we're doing by proposing things like having a, a code enforcement officer is for years, this council and the village trustees have told our community, we know that enforcing ordinances is an issue. We know that you want this, but we're not going to do it until we can figure out the governance issue of our two communities. So things like that, we're finally actually gonna be able to help figure out and provide a, a service to our community that we've been saying no to for years. So in my side, my gut reaction, yes, fiscally we're better off and uh, customer service wise and services to the community, yes, we're better off. And I see my- Yeah, I'm just, just gonna to add to what Andrew's saying about this. There's some things you cannot particularly quantify the value in a percentage or a number, dollar number, but I just wanted to let you know that by separating, becoming the city, our um, obligation to capital bond issues that the town faces potentially quite a lot of expenditures for improvements in the town, uh, we're not gonna be tied to. Right now, we earlier we discussed the bond for the police facility that's gonna be paid off in 2034. We're gonna separate that. From this point on, once we start getting, we, we'll be, only paying for our improvements within our city. Anything that occurs outside of the city, when the road washes out out there, we're no longer tied to that, as well as paying 100% of the capital projects within our community all by ourselves. So in that sense, it's, it's, it's hard to, 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 to state, but we're definitely better off, in my opinion. Thank you, Dan. Good point. Okay, thank you. Doing a quick hands check. There are no other hands up on Zoom. There's no hands up in the room. Last call for public comments, questions, concerns during a public hearing. Seeing no hands, no chirpings, trying to delay nothing. All right. So then we will go ahead and I'll close the public hearing on the fiscal year 24 budget. Thank you all for your questions, comments, concern. Thank you for participating in this process. And we will now go to a continued discussion. <laughs> so business item 6A, let's talk about the budget some more. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs>
okay. Um, so what you've got in your packet is a fairly short memo from, uh, from me. Uh, I've identified, um, again, just to sort of let you folks know, we also will be having a second public hearing on February 22nd. Um, and in terms of your timeline, uh, you've got to um, set your ballot items um, and your budget on March 8th. So uh, we will be having this on the agenda again um, on the 22nd and then again on the 8th. Um, so just wanted to point out a couple of things that we have identified since this budget was prepared um, tonight. Um, the election budget, uh, so for the last two years, um, the actual expenses for the election budget uh, has been plus, plus. about 24000 and about 32000 um, This line used to sit in the administration. We dropped elections down to the clerk's budget um, and we uh, budgeted 15000 We're realizing because of that shift, we sort of missed what those actuals have been for the last two years. Um, so we're going to do a little bit more work on this and figure out exactly what costs we need to uh, recommend to you because the what we've been able to benefit from in the mailing of the ballots for the last couple of years is we're right in line with the school and so we've cost shared what that cost has been. Um, so we're just going to take a little bit of a look um, to see if those actuals reflect that cost share or don't. Uh, we might be okay if um, the cost share does actually get us close to 15,000, which is what we've got budgeted now, but we might need to increase that. Um, just a, this doesn't change anything monetarily, but just um, uh, technically in our budget, we wanna have your city council stipends as a separate line in and of itself, so people can see what that is. Right now we've got the um, community, potential for community advisory board stipends on there and the best committee advisory, uh, best committee stipends on there too. So we'll pull those out to a separate line. Um, we have, uh, so we've talked about adding the staff for the potential of these other committees that might come our way. Um, and uh, I think it's still, um, we'll have to figure out what those committees are. And I think what probably makes the most sense is through our strategic planning work, you know, collaborative, mm -hmm. comprehensive strategic planning work that we want to do. Now we're our city, what is our now that we've like well we haven't 100 percent become a city i'll say from my day-to-day -day looking at it but we are 100 percent get there um what is our uh next steps in terms of our priorities um and i think that can help us decide what are the right committees going forward but um what we don't have is additional stipend money for these additional committees so the suggestion is to put in uh, enough of a stipend for maybe three more committees in the city. Um, mm -hmm. So that 10500 is about $50 a, uh, a meeting, five people, one meeting a month, plus the uh, fringe that goes along with that because it is um, considered as income. Um, and then just other two other things that I have um, identified even since I put this memo together last week. Uh, we just don't have a postage line at all in the clerk's budget, so that will be very minor, maybe like a couple hundred dollars for that. Um, and just uh, thinking through um, potential needs and space and if we will at some point benefit from having uh, rent or usable multi-purpose space um, outside of this building. Uh, so that, again, just a concept and idea um, that we'll probably try to do a little bit more work on for, for your next meeting. Thank you, Regina. Yep. Um, a couple of, just a quick question. You mentioned about, uh, having committee stipends as separate line items. Are you talking about all committees having the, like each committee having their own line item or just committee stipends in one? Um, the charter, uh, requires that the city right. council stipend is on its own line. So that's all I'm saying. Because right. right now in the legislative budget, we have the city council stipends plus mm -hmm. the uh, potential community advisory board and the best committee stipends all on one line. So we'll just need to break those out. So it's only separating the city council and not the others. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Because I just wanted to make sure that if somebody say 
if we had the housing commission as a unique line item that then someone wouldn't be able to quickly just do the math and say oh it seems as if x number of people are taking it and aren't doing it to just try to help a little bit without shaming somebody into either taking or not taking the stipend that yes. was the only impetus yep for us I, yeah that is what that is yeah and you know i'd have to think about that a tiny bit just to make sure um in my mind that we don't have any other committees that it's only one committee in a budget mm -hmm. um most of them are in the community development budget and those are all you wouldn't see that um but i'll have to think about that a little bit more in terms of where we put these other ones okay because yeah <clears throat> so yeah excuse me i have to talk to you a while um <laughs> we have bike walk tree advisory housing we've discussed that's it right currently operating right Cap now capital capital yeah, excuse me sorry um so four we've talked about resurrecting some kind of economic development or downtown or both. Yep. Um, Two more that don't have that. No, yeah, one of you. Um, there's been discussion in the community about uh, getting to a place where we uh, can form a recognizable committee. Uh, yep. And, you know, a lot of these are optional, right? So we don't, we're not paying by showing up. People can request to do this as needed. Uh, so it does leave us some flexibility if we have a special community project come up. You know, mm -hmm. maybe there's uh, an ordinance discussion that we want to have that includes that we need special input from people. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're trying to reach certain portions of our community that budget also can be used there because it's unlikely. And I think our history tells us that <clears throat> we're, budget we're budgeting for the amounts we we maximum we would need in the maximum, but that money's not all being, yeah. being taken out. So um, I think that's, that's kind of a benefit of that. Um, you know, we do have some flexibility as we you know, as we reach out for different things. And I sort of anticipate that with this next year, especially of 24, that we're going to have a lot of community outreach to, as we, as we get things, as we get things going as a new city and as we, we ramp up different efforts. So, um, but I don't think we'll need more than this. I just think it's nice that we're going to have the flexibility to, to engage with people. Just to elaborate for, for those listening, because the hard part of government budgeting is that we have to plan now. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to do something next year, we need to put it in the budget now. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it is going to be very difficult for that to happen. So in eight months, if somebody or a group comes to us and say or says, hey, we think it'd be fantastic if the city had a party planning committee, had a um, new uh, resident or new community member welcoming committee. Great. Thank you. And we don't have money in the budget to pay for the stipend. So that can't happen this fiscal year. It needs to wait until the next fiscal year. So hence part of that difficulty in this process of if it hasn't if it wasn't planned for, then sorry, it can't happen until the next budget year. Anything else? I'm good on that piece. Broadly with the budget? I'm sorry, what? Broadly with the budget? Um, I, I, I just want to, uh, first of all, observe that our, our new, uh, uh, manager and, um, finance director, I'm, I can't say how pleased I am and, and, uh, thankful and grateful I am. I thought, I thought you guys did a great job putting this together and I, you know, as, as a team, just not having worked with each other and you came together very quickly and put together a great presentation. Um, so I Thank really you. appreciate that. Everything was really clear. Um, the whole mock budget thing was a good idea. Um, I, I only going to observe, you just touched on it briefly. I do want to point out that, uh, and I, I'm, I'm not picking on recreation, but, and, but our recreation budget has increased almost 100% in three years. It went from, I can't remember where it was, was 620 and we're over a million dollars. That's, I understand all of the specifics um, of the recreation budget, why one thing or another. Nevertheless, sometimes you have to step back from the forest and so you don't see the trees and look at something because it, at the same time, in the same time period, our capital transfers, which is our capital cost, our repairing of critical infrastructure, that budget actually declined. Now, I know that that budget is pegged to upcoming pending capital projects. We try to anticipate and put the money in a year ahead of time. but that's telling us where our priorities are and it's a little concerning and so i as someone who is leaving the board i do urge you and we've heard this from some of our constituents i do urge you to put some kind of a recreation oversight or 
committee in place uh, just to make sure that we understand that this is a significant commitment this community is making to recreation uh, in, in, as opposed to some other things that we could be making commitments to. And so I'd make, like to make sure that we get community input and guidance on that going forward. Absolutely, Georgia. Um, in terms of the new committees that are within Regina's memo, the Recreation Advisory Committee is yeah. one of the ones that uh, ha will have money budgeted to be paying for. My English was not very good there, but I think you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know exactly what you say. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I know that at our last meeting, we had uh, a conversation around stipends um, and around our city council stipends. Raj, do you want to touch on this? Do you want me to, you to go first? Um, so based on our last conversation, one thing just contextually in thinking about how that conversation went and the things that we're trying to do uh, around around diversity, around equity and inclusion, none of us in this room are experts in the subject. None of us in this room have our crystal ball or magic eight ball and know if we do one thing here, what that is then going to do tomorrow, what that's then going to do in six months, nine months, 10 months, 10 years. We have no idea. And so we are here in this fog of either doing nothing and hoping for the best or doing something and hoping for the best. Personally, I, I do not believe in doing nothing and hoping for the best. To me, that's a fool's errand, my words. Um, and I would propose that we do something in terms of starting a conversation from a budgetary standpoint uh, and to try to find some kind of a, a happy medium, I would propose instead of the 6,500 that was originally proposed that we do 5,000 per council member. I mean, I'll, I'll go next because I'm not saying anything. Um, I'm fine with that. Um, I put this together. I put this together after talking to a bunch of people. I spent the past few days talking to some people that do have some knowledge around this with the state. Um, it is a conversation that's happening every day now in the state house. They're trying to address it. It's happening in boards similar to ours now around the state, not just here. Um, and it's centered around, you know, and I included this in the memo. Um, people in local leadership positions remain unaware of their biases or shortcomings and perpetuate a system where marginalized voices are further excluded from community affairs. Not on purpose. We're not doing anything. Here. I just want to clarify because it got a little confusing last time. I don't believe we're doing anything in here to make that. We're not knowingly coming at that. We're not intending that. Nothing we're doing. We're, what we're trying to do is serve the community. And what we've all been doing is doing that. So this isn't a comment on that at all. This is recognizing that when I was out recruiting for, for YouTube, for placing YouTube, for instance, I was talking to like single mothers who I thought would be great to come on here and having them identify things that weren't, you need to pay me. It was, how much time does it take? All right, well, let me look into that. It's like, wow, so what would you need? Well, babysitting right now in the community is about 20 bucks an hour per kid. So if we just cover our meetings and free work, it's 20, you know, so you get to that point where you're trying to say to people, we really want to hear you. You know, we don't have anybody on this board, for instance, that we're welcoming to the community that lives in all the new development we're bringing in. It is going to take some effort to meet them where they are, to get them here, because we are saying that we want their, their participation. We need to hear from them, because we need to know what to do with the community. I mean, we don't, we know some things, right? But, but we don't know what, we can't speak for them. We just simply can't. We can guess, you know. So, and and the irony there is, we could. You know, I've heard. I've heard. I'm not laughing at anybody else. Just myself for saying it like this. But we can say to ourselves, we should really get out there and talk to people. But we've already seen in numbers how much time we are currently spending, or anybody in our role, not just not about us, would already be spending just doing this work. So to then say, why don't you spend more time having a Saturday morning community conversation? at Autumn Pond, or stopping by when there's a barbecue. Okay, well, that's that's adding on in a way that's already, it, it's, it's ironic to me. So I, I think there are all kinds of ways to come to a number. I, I don't pretend to say 
that all of a sudden before the petitions for this election are due, that we're going to see a flood or even one. And I can't predict that we're going to see many more next election. But we're, we're, you know, these budgets, their numbers and their expenditures and their revenues, but their policy statements, their value statements. And what we're saying to our community by doing this is it's expensive, but in the grand scheme of things, I think 5000 is $4 and maybe 10 cents on the average home. Not nothing, because that happens every year. What we're saying is we really do want that input. We, we, we're going to meet people where they are. We can adjust it. You know, this isn't in the charter. This isn't in our, so it's not in our community constitution. We can come back in a couple of years and say, you know, that didn't really get us much. I don't know what the time frame would be. But if we're not getting the result we want, we can pivot. The reason this is coming up now rather rushed, and I didn't say this last time, I didn't know the two of you. I didn't know we were going to have two open seats. Mm -hmm. So that's not necessarily important because people still have to get elected, as you rightly pointed out, Dan. But it's harder to run against somebody that's already in. Right now we have open seats, so it's really, they don't have to compete against current board members. So that does make it easier, right? So if we're going to go out and try to round up some people and try to really convince them that they belong here, they can do it, we're going to support them this way as a community and we value them, it's a good time to do it. It's a little last minute, I guarantee you. I grant you that. Um, also, we have to make, like Andrew pointed out, we have to make this decision now for next March and April, for the next petition season. Because, you know, so if we don't put this in now, we're not only are we missing an opportunity for these two seats, but we're missing an opportunity for the next two seats. And and that's 80% of our board. We've we basically said we're gonna pit, we're gonna wait. And those seats last, that'll be six years we're waiting to see that turnover. And so I, I realize this is last minute, it's sudden, it was unexpected, but I think part of it comes from just being opportunistic in a way and saying, this is a good time to bring this up in the sense that it's a good time for people to join the board. And I'll stop, I've got other things I could okay, say. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I comment? All right, I'm sorry. All right. Um, I did want to express that I thought a lot about what you said. And I still disagree. I disagree with the five thousand dollars statement increase of five thousand or up to five thousand. Um, the things I've I've contemplated this issue, and a couple things come to mind. Like I said, there's no guarantee that we're going to get those you know people to to um, come from that community that you're talking about, whatever single mothers or BIPOC community or what have you. Um, the things I see that could not tie to cost, but like you said, it's hard to beat an incumbent, is term limits. Increasing the size of the board from five, these are, are, are some charter things, but increasing the size of the board from five to seven members. So, you know, you're getting a large, you know, board, but potentially from more things. Because to try and placate every group I mean, you, you, could, you could break it down to the elderly. We, we heard from people talking about the senior bus and all the things. There are many, many groups, factions, whatever out there that want to be heard. I mean, to get representation from all of them, we'd probably have a board of, who knows, 30, 40 people, what, what, what you know, who, who knows how many, what is the right number and how many people have to be on board to, to, to make it equitable or what people think is going to be equitable. So I think term limits, I think, you know, may potentially increasing the size of the board. Another thing could be we have committees or groups or advisory boards mm -hmm. reaching out to people. We had it with the, fire, with the police department with these issues. I don't see why we can't do, do such so we can get input from the youth, the elderly, the handicapped, everybody out there that's in a position where they'd love to be able to, to have input, but it's difficult for them to get in, involved with this due to whatever you know limitations they have. And to think that money is gonna solve it, I disagree. Can I, can yeah. I say, can I jump in? Okay. I'd, I'd like to bring a completely different dimension into this, okay? I'm, I'm gonna start by saying, 
I think it's, and I discussed this with Andrew previously, when we were putting the charter together, there were a bunch of little areas that troubled me and but we were in a rush we needed to make it in time for the legislative session so we kind of let a lot of stuff go and i think we're making some good corrections this year but compensation for the city council was one of those issues that i was a little leery about and uh and and here's why i think it's inappropriate and kind of borderline unethical for any elected board in charge of a, of a municipal budget to give itself a raise and in effect the way the charter is set up by simply putting a raise for the city council uh, into the general fund budget uh, the only if and we've already seen that this is a controversial issue and we've gotten emails already and we've seen this as controversial uh, this this question because you can come at it from so many different angles begs significant community input but you're not going to get that because you're going to put it into the general fund budget and people who don't agree with giving us a raise, what's their choice? The only choice is to vote down the police, the fire department, public works, capital. They have to vote down the entire municipal budget in order to say, no, I don't want you to get a raise. Okay. And I, in other words, we're in effect holding the municipal budget hostage. Okay. I'm sorry, but that's how I look at it. I would like to propose a, a kind of a compromise here, if I can. Uh, how do we get around it? Look at the charter language. How do we get around it? I would like to propose that we put a question on the ballot about doing this. Okay, Not a separate line item, but a separate question. So shall the, shall the, the FY25 budget uh, include a proposal to increase city council stipends to five thousand dollars obviously it would have to take effect in the following year's budget in the fy25 budget right because you can't we can't retroactively put it back into the budget because the budget's going to have been approved but let me point out i don't think we can disagree on a lot of things but i think we can all agree i don't think there's an emergency here i don't think that the wheels of government are going to come undone if the Essex Junction City Council doesn't get a pay raise this coming this July, I think this could wait. I think then you would know it's going to be in place, Raj, by the, by the next election cycle. You, you would know it's going to be in there, okay? And that would give us the opportunity to really hear what the community has to say, you know, because there are a lot of people looking at this, at our budget, and looking, and we have just heard from a couple, are going, Gee, I voted for separation thinking I was going to see a decrease in my, well, it's complicated because of inflation, because we had the transfer, but nevertheless, it, it, there, are, there are people out there who are looking at us saying, what, what, is it, what is it that you guys ever say no to? You say yes to everything, but when, when do you say no to some request? So, but on the other hand, I completely understand the, the issues that you're raising, Raj. So. I hear a lot about community input. Let's get some real significant binding political uh, 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 community input. Put this as a question on the upcoming ballot that's going to annual meeting. At annual meeting, we can explain our positions. You can make your case. It, it can be debated publicly. If the people say yes, then the city council has its, it has its answer. The other reason why I think it's, a, it's an ethical way to, to approach this is because it really does kind of distance the current city council from the, the pay increase that happens. In other words, two of the members, won't, we're certainly not going to benefit from it, but two of the other members may not benefit from it. It's for a board that's going to be put together a year from now. So that makes it less like we're looking just to compensate ourselves as opposed to saying, we think that this is a, a good move, a good governance move. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would like to make that proposal as a compromise. I, the, the only other thing I'm going to add, I, I, I do want to point out that there are, we, there are a lot of unknowns about, about why people in some populations don't apply for the board or don't run for the board. I, I want to point out that what we do know out there in Essex Junction is that there are thousands of people middle and upper income people who also don't run for the board, okay? 
uh, is that because they're bad people? They don't care about their community? Of course not. They care about their community, but they don't want to get involved because they don't care. They don't, they're not that interested. They don't want to take on that degree of responsibility. They don't want to be in the public eye. They don't want to have to go and knock on doors and, and get, get a petition signed. Uh, and, and so when I say, and so they don't, and so we can understand why those people, and it's understandable why people who could run for the board, they have the resources and the time that, to, to run for the board, and we don't, and they don't, and yet we say that's okay. Well, why doesn't that, that logic and that reasoning apply across to all, everyone in every other community, low-income people, people in marginalized community, in, in communities? I, I, I think that I, I'm just pointing out that you're right, putting more money Onto the city count into the city council compensation, it, it is a real shot in the dark that it's going to do anything. And in fact, it could do just the opposite of what you want. It could encourage more people um, from other parts of the community, not not marginalized parts of the community, to also run, and they could further displace it. Um, so it, I I just don't know what to say. I don't think that there, there's a clear path. I'm not sure it's fiscally irresponsible uh, responsible to for us to spend money on something that we're not really clear what the problem is and we have absolutely no idea if it's gonna have an effect. I think we have to understand that it's, it, a lot of people would question whether that's a reasonable thing for the city council to do. So that's why I will go back to my suggestion that we put this as a separate question, um, let, let, the, let the community weigh in on it, and then that will inform um, next year's budget by the city council. Thank you, George. Uh, Amber, did you want to add anything at this point? Um, I'll, I'll just add a quick comment. Um, I'm, I'm struggling with this question, honestly. Um, I do think it's always, it's always nice to add an increase um, because I think that's just the general, I mean, the city council stipend stayed at what it was for years and then we got the increase, we had the increase last year. Um, I'm just struggling with that large of an increase, um, and I, I hear the counter proposal of five thousand, but I'm still, I'm still not, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sold that it, I would go that far. You know, maybe two thousand, twenty five hundred. I appreciate all of the research that that Raj has done on this, and I totally understand where he's coming from in regards to the to the numbers that he's proposing. Um, I, but I will just. Say that one of the biggest things, one of the biggest imped impediments to me even stepping up was not the monetary piece of it, was the time commitment. You know, as, as somebody who works 40 plus hours a week, it's not, it's not the two hours that we sit here on a Zoom call or in at to Lincoln. It's the four hours that we're spending reading 200 pages um, on top of trying to, you know, trying to live our lives here. Um, and so that's, that's, while I see the the monetary piece of it, I guess I'm also agreeing with with Dan and George and saying I'm not sure that that's the reason entirely why we don't have the diversification um, on the board. So I guess I'm still in an I don't know where I'm at kind of position, but just wanted to share my thought process. Great, thank you, Amber. Um, in terms of moving this forward so i think overall I, I i completely understand where you're both coming from term limits have been discussed before we we're discussed yesterday at the state house you know there's pros and cons to that um as you said before people still need to get elected and i think george that's where when you refer to those people who might make more than the yeah. average or some of those people that might make less Everybody here still has to get elected. Mm -hmm. I don't think the community is going to all of a sudden go, ah, oh, that guy, that's the one, you know, if they don't believe in them. So I think some of those concerns, well, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. I, I think the community is a little more savvy in terms of who they're going to put on the board. So I don't I'm actually share that concern. But overall, I think the theme I'm hearing and, and my, my thought to all of this is you're, you're asking a system that's in place to change itself to reduce its power. You know, so if you think about this as a system and you're looking at it and saying, well, it should just agree that at some point, and, and you know, it's a way to kind of perpetuate that system. When, when people say, 
well, we can't quantify it. We're going on faith. We're going to, you know, see how it goes. We'll ask the community. Very few of the of these moves of this type in our country's history have been by popular vote. And had they been left to popular vote, would not have happened. We'd still be dealing with other things. I'm not equating this to that necessarily. I'm saying there are no, I'll come back to it, single mothers on this, on this board. There are no, there's nobody under 30. Right. Um, you know, you see the grades. What are you talking about? <laughs> Twenty nine. Sure. Um, yeah, Ten years ago. There. You know, we could go on and on and on. It's it's not simply a bipod concern. Um, but but I've been out talking to a lot of people who care just as deeply about our community as everybody in this room right now. And and I I know all of you, amazing people. But every time. One of these new things, and I look out, and there's more than two people. It's all of us. It's just us. And I know there's a few, there's a dozen people probably watching on YouTube. Some will watch later. There's a, probably eight people on Zoom right now that are employees or staff. It's always us. We always joke about it's how it's always us. I'm not mad at it. We always joke. I think it's funny. We go to elections, same bowl workers. We go to committees, same people volunteering. You know, we had a great turnout for the hiring committee. That was cool. And we got people we were interested in. We can't talk them into coming on the board. It's, you know, I put in the memo how much this would cost. Again, not trivial. I don't pretend any any expenditure in our budget is trivial. But I think the community, and, and I, I will, we're not making a decision tonight. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll think about what you said about the advisory. You know, we've done it with other things. My concern about that, like I said, is, you're asking a system that sort of benefits from from leaving it alone to change itself. And I, I don't have a history of that happening. I don't see where that's happened before, especially when people can say, well, you're just trying to you're just trying to get to a percentage. I mean, Dan, I, I think I know what you mean, but you were I think when you when you talk about this, you you try to I think you're you're trying to kind of is the is the answer you're looking for what are the numbers we want to see? We're not looking for a target. We're looking for voices. We're looking for life experience, lived experience. We're looking for lived experience. We, I don't have, there's no target, there's no right number. It will change election to election. Um, so I, I don't want us to, to get caught up with what's the right ratio, you know? Are we, are we on percentage for the number of people who speak English as a second language that are in our community? The simple fact is that the majority of the growth by far in the state of Vermont were people of color, non-English speakers as first languages, and others in this past census. So I'm not saying that's the target. It's a wide net. So I'm just trying to answer, and again, George, I'll give that some thought about, you know, should we do that? Can, and we'll get some feedback from people, I think. But. Can, I, can I respond to your yeah. thing about the percentage and stuff? I, I don't disagree with you. It doesn't have to be a percentage, but you're talking about single mothers. You're talking about different people from different backgrounds, different life experiences on the board. As I said earlier, to we're, how, how many different voices do we, we all have different voices. I have a different background than you do. We all have different backgrounds and it depends on how you look at it, Raj, okay? So my background is law enforcement, my, my whole life, okay? I am a single father. I think the rest of you guys are all married, okay? And, okay, well, I, I still was for all the term, my, you know, whole time, whether I was on the planning commission all the way through, rec advisory council, this board, and worked the job at shift work, nights, weekends, call outs for search and rescue, everything. I made it work. It was difficult and not easy, but that's something I chose to do. And it's not, no one forces you to do it. And I try to represent all the people and don't, I, I felt kind of almost like an affront to me that because I, I can't, we don't, I, the initial message was we don't represent our community. And I think we do. And to think that I'd like to know, because I'm not of a unique situation, whatever you're describing it, I can't represent those people. Our, our, our federal representatives up for the longest time, Bernie Sanders, Patrick Leahy, and Peter Welch, three old white guys. They represent the state of Vermont. 
Okay, we have a super majority in Montpelier of Democrats. Okay, they got the House, they've got the Senate. We have a moderate governor, but we talk about inequities, but we don't look beyond. We talk countrywide. So there's a lot of ways you can look at the picture. I'm just saying I disagree with put, trying to solve this by putting money to it. I, I want to hear voices from everybody. We try and do that. We, we're doing a lot more of it, like I said before, now that we, we Skype in meetings. Like I said before, Patty used to, Patty Benoit used to come around with that three room binder to teach our houses and drop that off for our meetings. Now we get people calling in. We have much more attendance than we ever had in the 12 years I've been on this board. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Is it perfect? No. But, you know, you, you, it's, it's, a, it's a process. We move forward. We've moved forward quite a bit. And that's all I'll say right now. Yeah, I just want to say uh, yes to everything you were saying. I'll add that when you were talking about we have other committees, they can report to us and then we can do something about it. Mm -hmm. That's to your, that's to our filters. We filter that. We bring our way of thinking, our life experience, and interpret what they tell us in our own way and then make our decision. So they're not making that decision is what I'm saying. So when we say it's good enough to have that representation there, my reaction to that is, yes, you're right. It is amazing to have that representation there. That's, that's enough. And when, we take, and when we say we don't need to make that impact on this board, we're saying it's good enough to have it there, and then we're just going to let that filter through the same group of people that always serve. So we're keeping that lack of representation in the decision-making table, you know, it's kind of like I heard from I heard from somebody about the budget. My interests are being represented. This is an increase. Valid, 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 valid. I asked some questions about that. They're not here in this group. We can think like them. We can hear them, and we can say, "I think they'll like this." But it's even the people you're talking about, George. You know, like we're filtering. We're always filtering. It's like newspaper writing. Editors will always filter the writer. That's what ends up in the paper. It's just doing that so you can look, let's reflect to it, right? But it's the same thing. It's our filter. And I, I, we don't have to go on this all night because we've got a long meeting and we don't have to decide tonight. But I just want this continued thinking about it. And I appreciate the input. I really do. And the, and the so I'll stop. I, I, I want to clarify. Let me, let me quickly, as a former editor, I want to say, uh, considering the state of social media today, I think things were a lot better off when they did go through well, editorial. I will, I will but we'll put that, that we'll put that issue aside. <laughs> I, I'm trying to say, I really, Raj, I, 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 I'm trying to say, and this is, this is a lively debate, and so I, I'm posing the question to the city council, why not amplify this debate and let the community have this debate? Um, and let them let them vote on it. I understand what you're saying that sometimes an institutional structure doesn't want to change itself, but I I think we're I think we're pretty a, a pretty flexible progressive group here in Essex Junction, and I would trust the voters on this, and I would re just really urge uh, urge us to try to let's let's get community input on it, put it on a ballot uh, as a separate question. Again, I, I have to point out, I've been on here 15 years, um, it, 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 you know, but I didn't even know they gave compensation when I joined. Uh, and so we've done a pretty good job for the last 15 years. I think holding off one more year is not going to be critical. And then if, if the answer is yes, then you guys will know what to do. And then in the next election cycle, in, in a, you know, a, a year from now, you, the, the people who run for, for those seats, they will know that starting in a couple of months, they're going to get a little more compensation. Just, See, and if you bring... Because it's two elections, it's effectively two election cycles. They want. Well, no, it would kick in, it would kick in in the, in the, in that, in that, in that uh, budget. It, it would kick in in that, that fiscal year, in the, in the, in July of that fiscal year. So you, you would have it. You would, it would only be you a few miss, months away. You would miss this one. You'd well, miss this miss one. Right. No, All you'd miss right. is this one. Right. And, and so it would kick in the following year. And so all I'm saying, and I don't think that's a, I think that's a reasonable um, compromise to make in order to really let the community weigh in on this and inform the board. And, and I, I'll, let me add, I would recommend that, uh, that you, we either, you guys either consider maybe altering this uh, in the charter to how, how the uh, to, to, to give the community, the community a little more input into this, 
um, down the road. And I think that that would give you an opportunity to do that as well. Um, so I, I, I would just urge you to do it. I think it would be a good thing. I think it would be good to have the community debate this and, and give us uh, and give you guys uh, their input on it. So the only thing um, I'd like to just to wrap this up, the only things that I, I kind of want to add into this um, in terms of somebody not liking a line item within our budget, whether that be our stipend, whether that be the amount for the police department, uh, health officer, whatever recreation, anything else in our budget, the only recourse anyone has is to vote it, to vote the budget in its totality up or down, regardless of what it is. And so at some point in time, the people who have been elected by the community to make some of these tough decisions have to make a decision. And it's of course up to us whether we choose to utilize that power that has been given to us or whether we abdicate that power. Um, with public input, I got two emails. I don't know about the rest of you. That's all I got. Uh, on Facebook, there was some lively conversation about this. Broadly, it was in support, mm -hmm. a few against, but much more so in support of increasing the stipends. The question of should it be 6,500, 5,000, 4,000, different numbers were thrown around. A broad increase was, uh, was favorable. Um, I didn't see anything on Front Porch Forum. If there's other conversations on other forms of social media, I don't do those, so I have no idea. Um, term limits, I would say governance in general. One of the things we put in our charter is to have a study on governance and our governance options uh, by year th or within three years of the passage of our charter. So these are some conversations that I, I hope our community does have around our governance structure, around the number of people uh, who sit at this table. Um, should we have wards, term limits, all those types of things. Um, so again, we could look at, at that point in time, other aspects of the system to change to then see what types of impact that may have. But again, as Raj is saying, this is a system with various attributes to the system. Mm -hmm. And so we can either change something, hope for the best, or do nothing and hope for the best. Um, and we can continue that. Well, I, I, I think you, you brought up a good point, uh, Andrew. I think that it's reasonable to say that this a board giving a board getting it, it increasing its stipend um, is always going to be a controversial issue, I think. Okay, um, and just as staff wants to, if they they want salary increases, uh, uh, operational increases, we're the boss in terms of that. They have to come to us and ask our permission. And who's our boss? Yeah. Um, so I think it's time for us to go to the boss and, and ask the boss's opinion. Uh, number one, and I think you raised a good question because when we transitioned from having live meetings to uh, Australian ballot, I think that there was a, a, a tacit um, uh, necessity in there for us to not put controversial things uh, into the Australian ballot budget because, as we know, I'm sorry, it does not get the scrutiny that it does when you when you had two or three hundred people gathered at the auditorium and stuff like this would get pulled out and debated and, and people could change it from the floor that that doesn't happen and it doesn't get that level of scrutiny before people vote on it so again i go back to saying um that's why i think this is controversial i think it's it's a fascinating debate for the community to have i would urge us to just put it on hold you know i think we can safely the, the wheels of government, the government won't explode if we put it on hold for a year. Let the community have its say, and then that will inform the city council when you guys are putting the budget together next year. That would be my my suggestion. Um, anything new? So many things. Um, I think controversial really is, I guess, defined by whoever's looking at it. Mm -hmm. So I could suspect that we have many controversial things in our book. Let's put that out there. I think this is, you know, if we're looking to the state, this is how the legislature does it. And they're struggling right now with this question because they don't dare do this because it's politically difficult. They're also struggling and probably being impacted more by not being able to get the bodies they need to, to run and serve. Um, and and so I we don't have to keep going on this. I just um, I think it's an interesting idea to have the, the community weigh in. I always want to know what the community thinks. Um, 
I'm not going to say I don't trust them at all. Um, but there's not a lot of history um, there. Um, but I will, you know, I'll think, I'll think hard about it because I'm talking to people about it. I'll say that when you come over. The thing about controversial things in our budget, Raj, the controversial things in our budget for projects or anything we want to, you know, start new, add to the budget, this could be construed or looked upon as being self-serving. It's, it's as opposed to the projects we do in the community benefits the community as a whole. Indirectly, you can make your argument and say this benefits the community as a whole. But I think if you were to pull a lot of people, they could say, well, this, you know, you're giving yourselves a raise, as it were. And that is very self-serving. Whereas the other stuff, I don't look upon it as being self-serving just as much as any member of, you know, we, we can't have a, a person involved in public works, you know, like Ricky Jones on this board, because it's he's conflict of interest. But we, you know, the, his budget, he's he's dealing with his budget and everything. But I'm saying we're able to vote and say our per, our personal stipend is going to go up this this much, you know, basically like George saying, and then they got to vote the whole, but it's, it's tied to the budget. And then if, they, if they're opposed to it, it really doesn't get, you know, it's, yeah, it's just want to make sure we're not equating want to participate and good with volunteer and automatically losing that good and service to community with increase of stuff because we're already paying ourselves. Right. I'm know? just saying, I'm just saying, it's always been something. It's just just, never oh, been. it is, but just, I'm yeah, saying the so extent. I'm sure saying the extent. Right. I'm saying the extent. It's not, no, it, the, across the board, communities, everyone, you know, generally there's a stipend. For community service, but I'm just saying the extent of it, the amount of it, this, this yeah. adding, adding it to, gotcha. you know. So at the beginning of the public hearing, I said that we would then talk about the budget. And at that point in time, I would ask if there are public comments <clears throat> on things that they've heard so far. So with that in mind, if anybody either in the room or out in Zoom land wants to make a comment, have a question, uh, things you've heard thus far about the budget, because after this, I'm assuming or I'm thinking we're going to go off of this topic and onto the next agenda item, please go ahead and raise your hand. Marlon. Just listen to the plan of talk and kind of maybe think of some things I wanted to maybe just talk about just to give my two cents since I didn't participate online. So, um, I know Roger talked a little bit about it, uh, but we talked about it on our own board too. Um, from my perspective, speaking from an equity lens, um, I don't look at it as checking boxes off. I don't look at it as I need to like pick one person from here, pick another person from there, pick another person from there to make sure that I, I fill all these boxes. That's not equity. Equity is, is giving everybody a chance to actually have a seat at the table. And I think, and again, I don't know because again, I don't I don't come to the meeting as I should. I can't check it online after the fact. I apologize for that, but I was have the open question for you guys. Um, one, you guys did a lot of this past year. You know, making a city, and I appreciate that. There was obviously a lot of work, you put a lot of hours into that. But, you know, that including, you know, the years prior to that, for, for, for being on the board, how long? Like, Andrew, how long have you been on the board? Going on 12 years? 12 11 years? years? And Rod, how long have you been? This is my board. George? 15. Dan? 12. Never. How long have you been on the board? I think it's four, almost four. Four years. <laughs> so you're the, so you're the, you're the, you're the, the newbie technically in the board, even though you're not. Yeah, Raj and I are almost the same time frame. Okay, so so I'll ask the question, you guys, especially for the three that have got over the decade experience on the board. So in, in your time on the board, I'm certain there's times we've all missed meetings. I've missed meetings with the school board. I'm certain you guys missed time, meetings here because of, of commitments. Has there ever been a time where you guys have missed a board meeting, not because you had a prior commitment, because you, but because you couldn't afford to come to the meeting? Like, let's say you got, you know, you're at home and the kids are there. There's no way to watch them. You can't pay or afford to pay a babysitter to watch them. Or you are you're you're having to work up to a certain point, and if you can't you can't afford to miss work because you can't pay your bills. It's either come to the board meeting or it's I don't I don't put food on my table or I don't. Are not able to provide for my family. Is that is that ever happened for the for the three of you specifically? So you guys, the, the team members of the board, do you, do you recall a time a time that you've been on the board 
that they may have happened to your event. I mean, it's that hard decision of like, I can't come to the board because if I don't, my family doesn't get paid, my rent doesn't get paid, um, you know, my children don't get washed, and, and I'm unable to do that. So just out of curiosity. Right. I, I think that we, um, I think we can just broadly completely understand what you're saying yeah. not trying to stop the the comments yes just yeah. want to make sure we don't get into a have you have and i and i don't mean and i apologize yeah. but my, my, the point the question the point of that question is this i think that bringing up the idea of a stipend and yes it's not it's some people will see it as a large or not but i think for some folks i think an argument we had in our board is the point is this is i think that the talk of, the, of choice, like a lot of people choose not to want to do this work. It's a, it's a hassle, it's a pain, and it is. Trust me, I, 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 I'm a newbie to this, and it's I it is a pain to do this work. <laughs> but when I look at it as that I have the ability that I don't have to worry about um, making that financial choice mm-hmm. of, you know, if I come to a meeting, is my family going to be fed? Is there going to be a roof over my house? And I think that's when you start talking about that case point there. If I can afford babysitting, if I can afford to maybe miss a couple hours of a shift, that's not going to impact me to be able to have a seat at these tables to help my voice be heard and to make an impact in the in the work. Again, you guys have done great work, and I appreciate what you guys have done. It's not been easy. We've asked a heavy lift of all of you, and you guys have come through this community, and I appreciate that. I really, really do. But I think that sometimes we talk about equity. We focus on categories. We focus on you know, does the person next to me fit a certain category and look a certain way? That's not equity. Equity is allowing everybody an equal opportunity at these seats, at these tables that you guys have right now, that I have on Tuesday nights, on a Tuesday. I can tell you for a fact, not everybody in this community has that opportunity. It's not a choice, because a choice is I can do A or B, and at the end of the day, yeah, I may miss something, but it's not going to have a major impact on my life. Equity is, if I choose B, I can have a very negative impact on myself, my family's life. So when we talk about equity, I, I just kind of want to put that out there screen, but it's something to think about for food to thought, that I understand there's a lot of talk of can be controversial, but I, I urge you guys from an equity lens to think about not so much of a choice, not so much as, you know, um, people trying to fill boxes or fill spots here. It's about an opportunity for folks that we don't get chance to hear very often. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I will admit, I'll say on the school board, I got lauded repeatedly for being the first BIPOC person on the school board. And this school district has been here hundreds of over 100 plus years. That's, it should, we shouldn't be, that shouldn't be a barrier. But I know there are others in the community with a barrier before, and I heard them, I talked to them, and they appreciated me being, having to see at that table. So I just asked you guys, when you, when you think about this further, that yes, I, I understand where it's coming from. You want the community to speak. Yeah. And I agree. I, I, I can understand that and I agree with that. But I just say for, for you guys in here in this conversation, please think about that. That when you're looking at this here, it's not about it's about making sure everybody has has a has a, a, an opportunity that to see at this table. And I know for a fact that not everybody in this community has that choice right now. Because we've seen an art where people have not wanted to come to work because they can't. Not because they choose to. But because they flat out can't, and it's a financial issue right now for most of those folks. So I'll just leave it at that. So thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you, Marlon. Anybody else in the room? Bridget. Just a couple of quick things. Um, if you are going, so, if you are planning or thinking about putting this stipend issue um, as a separate question on the ballot, as George suggested. It's going to require a lot of education because people are just, you know, I'm sorry, me, you know, and and once they understand the issues, understand the time you're spending, those kinds of things. So I would like to to know that you will commit to doing that education, however, however you have to do it, because I don't think putting it on the ballot is really going to have the effect in terms of community education that you that you're looking for you want an informed decision made by by the citizenry and and just putting it on there is not going to do that i think you all know that but it is a commitment to to do that education the second thing um going back to a comment that george made about uh about reestablishing um 
of uh, a recreation advisory council. Um, I just want to be really clear. I served on that board as did Dan, Raj, and I served on that board for 12 years. Um, it is not an oversight board. You would have to rewrite the charter job, whatever you want to call it, if you want that kind of a board. We were an advisory board. We served as the conduit between the community and recreation. And it was, we didn't have budget oversight and things like that. If that's what you're looking for, um, it's going to require a, a, a total rewrite of, mm -hmm. of our, of what, what we used as a, as a, as a mission statement. Um, you know, we, we changed charter a couple times, but um, never did we have that kind of, of oversight or supervisory capacity. So that's it. Just to expand on that for one quick moment, since you brought it up. Uh, the other thing that it would likely require is a charter change, since we're very clear in their charter that the manager has the ultimate responsibility on uh, the departments within our community, and that it is not given to the, to the city council in terms of operational uh, oversight, but rather yeah. our manager. And yeah. so if... That, that's yeah. occurred to me a lot in terms of this conversation, in relation to this conversation, mm -hmm. especially having served on that board for as long as I did, um, council for as long as I did. Um, uh, using the rationale that recreation needs more oversight if you will you all are the you're the oversight board you you and 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 the manager oversee that aren't you at the same i mean thinking about this does that mean that public works same kind of oversight right i i hear your logic yeah, yeah yep. can i enter just, just just i i was what i was thinking bridget is more like the brownell oversight board now that is in the charter and it's in their foundation charter that they have to have a board like that but i've been on that board and certainly the director wendy has control and and they and she proposes a budget but then they have a lot of input to that budget before the budget comes to us and that's really what I, I was sort of recommending for okay. something of so like you're recreation. Talking, just so you know, you're talking about you're not talking about advisory council. You're talking about some kind of an oversight board. Yep. And if that again would require a lot of research and education in terms to establish because because across the board, um, recreation advisory councils do not have that kind of right. power or oversight. They just don't. So that they're 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 established to communicate with the community, to volunteer at events, to do those kinds of things. So you're talking about a totally different kind of board. Yep. And I, I don't approve or disapprove. I'm just saying it's going to require some, some work. Just, just some one work. quick word. It's a, it's a $4 million uh, cost center right now with their, with their, uh, with their, uh, all their program funds. Uh, that I believe is our largest cost center in the, in, in the city. Third. I think it's it's a, third. a third. I think so. I'm not sure. It's what you call streets, which I call public works. Uh, no, that's a that's about that's under two million. It depends on what we're what we're calling uh, yeah. in terms of what or what you're including in terms of general fund or. Well, I, I, I'm not trying to engender a conversation, but I'm just saying no, it's I'm, it's a very very significant. It's no longer it, when you go from half a million a year to that much money. It's a significant amount of money, it's, which requires a significant response. I think. Right. And I'm not have, saying they're doing anything bad. Right. But it's a that's a big budget. I'm not defending or or because I haven't been involved in that mm -hmm. closely with that group for a while. But I, I do think we asked Rep to do a lot that we yeah. formally did in other you know like okay they'll take it on they'll take it on the Memorial Day yep. Parade they'll take this on they'll take that on and you can't do that and then say. Uh, Wait a minute, your your budget is increasing and that's not going to work. I mean, if all of this is a part of the whole, right? Yep. I mean, it's a part of the whole examination of how how a municipality um, runs, how it works, and how it works for the community, how it works for the staff, how it works for everybody. And yep. and this should be something we spend time on, you know, and um, and, and and examine in terms of how we want this to work. And it's kind of the same conversation you're having about the, the getting people to serve, you know, and seeing the same people over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, I just think there's another thing we can do here. There's something else. I mean, I've struggled with it for 20 years. I don't know, you know, but uh, there's something else. There's a way that we can we can connect the community to yep. the municipality, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I just want to say, I, I agree with you. 
I we're going to have a strategic planning process at some point right in the near future. Mm -hmm. One of the things I wanted to talk about because there's a lot of all of a sudden there's a lot of talk about recreation advisory committee right now, and it, you know it's fine. Uh, we had one for a while. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I've been thinking a lot about how we interact with our community mm -hmm. and the number of committees we have and the number of required people, number of people that requires. And can we can we think about a different way? Can we be more nimble? Can we have a can we have people we just know we can go to on a topic and say, look, I've got this project problem. Do you have a few weeks to or six weeks to engage on it and give us some advice? And and really have groups of people that are out there to help us when we need it. Or that bring us or rec or public or whoever things that need to be worked on. And then we can, you know, so to be more nimble, to be more creative, to get more voices in, to not have these separate little silos that then require whole, whole, whole you know, times that we need to meet with them. They're, you know, mm -hmm. they're all then under different meeting requirements, different nights. Yeah. You know, like I, I think we 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 have this opportunity as a new city. I said I keep it brief. We have this opportunity as a new city to really kind of look at how we're doing this. And I think I just asked for folks to give us a chance to get the city going. I know that sounds a little lame, no. but we really just need a chance to get the city going. We're going to talk about this. We're going to engage the community on it. We need a couple of years or a year. Yeah. I'm sorry, we just need some time. I've always been a proponent of involving the community, and I think we saw with the manager search committee that um, you can ask the community to do that very serious, very, in some ways, pretty difficult work. Mm -hmm. And they step up. They step up. I think they're, they're in, in a way, we need to do more of that. Give the community some important jobs, some really important jobs. And um, I think they'll step up, and I think they'll come out of the woodwork to do it. So. Absolutely. And that needs full facilitation, which is why you're seeing some of these positions in the budget yeah. recommended, because we need people to interact with the with the community in that way. Yeah. So I mean, when you when you when we talk about that, I just want to make sure as we're talking about the budget and everything that people understand this takes. It's not the entire reason we're not. You know, we need more people. But we have a lot of things we want to do here as a community, and and I think that requires a conversation, and that requires some staff, and it's different than what we thought two years ago, yeah. and it's unfortunate. But I will say that I'm a proponent of just simply, simply just rip off the Band-Aid. Yeah. Very difficult. So I want, we want to hear from more people if it's not the right way to go, or if it is. Well, you know, you're having really important conversations. Right mm -hmm. here, right now. And um, that's the beginning. Yep. I, I certainly hear more opinions and um, ideas. And I think that's that's certainly where you start. But, but you know, I'm, a, I'm just a strong proponent of getting the yep. community involved and, and um, in really important work. So, go right. for it. Thank you, Bridget. Can I just add one, one thing? Yeah. Um, sorry, just mostly since we are talking about the budget, just want to be clear that I, I get the point about the um, EJRP budget, but just so most folks know that a sh very strong majority of that is not uh, at general fund expense at the property tax. Exactly. It is right. a uh, program-based um, enterprise it's fund, enterprise. essentially. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right. The overwhelming majority, something like uh, two-thirds or three-quarters of EJRPs uh, revenue and expenditures goes through uh, the the enterprise funds, which are user fees by the people who use those things. Whether that be our child care, licensed child care, uh, the recreation programs in general, the pool, all those those things, um, which are not in the general fund and so are not paid for by taxes. Anybody else in the room? Seeing no hands in the. So I've got my email in, and I warned you. <laughs> yep. You email. That, that may not be the last. One. <laughs> Your email is in the reading file. I, I it is in the email. I would I would love if there's anybody online or in the room that would maybe go up and speak, and I wouldn't have to. But if not, I would. Uh, there's speak. one person online who'd like to speak. Could we hear from them? Maybe they're going to speak for me. Maybe, Elise. Oh, good lord! I'm I'm supposedly maybe speaking for someone. Um, I apologize. <laughs> I am not putting my camera on because as my grandma said, I don't have my face on. Um, 
So I, I wanted to just chime in and said, one, I'm voting yes on this budget. So thank you so much for all the hard work. I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to also voice my support for Marlon's position on the stipend. Um, I do have a bit of a conflict of interest in this, uh, but I thought it was important enough to step forward and say that I know, I, I think number one, it is an equity issue. I hope it doesn't end there as a conversation about increasing a stipend, but potentially how do we also remove other barriers from people's way um, to level the playing field and give them the opportunity uh, to serve. Uh, so I really encourage the council to think of not only raising a stipend, um, and I'd like to see debate over the amount, but also about other things like maybe supporting childcare, uh, things like that, giving more options for virtual options, which I think we've more moving towards. But I think this is critical piece of work uh, for the city to show a commitment to. The second thing that I would say in support of the stipend is there's a value to people's time and their volunteering and serving. And I also support this in the legislature, paying the people in the legislature for all their time, uh, because it certainly is a barrier. Um, and I really would like to just acknowledge everyone who does put in their time, whether it be on a committee, on a council, an elected position, that that's time away from their families, that's time away from their education, uh, that's time away from their own sort of uh, self-care. So I think that value should be acknowledged, and I think one way we do that is financially. So thank you for that. I also want to uh, voice my support for an advisory committee for EJRP, but I do believe that that makes, it takes a little thought and we do want the, we, I want to understand fully what that advisory committee is responsible for having worked um, in a lot of nonprofits that have boards and committees that staff uh, reports to. It's very difficult to have so many people trying to drive the ship um, as a staff member, and we need to trust our staff to do the right thing with the proper oversight. But I'm sorry, I feel like the push to to target EJRP at this time is is more personal than it is about EJRP. And I think that I am totally open to an advisory committee conversation, but I'm willing to wait for that conversation to happen in a thoughtful well documented and process. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Elise. Uh, next up on Zoom, we have Annie Cooper. Hi. Um, my push, uh, Elise, uh, is not personal. Um, Andrew, uh, speaking to you, uh, I would like to um, say that a $4.6 million recreation budget while two thirds to three quarters of it comes in through program is residential income. It's income for the city. And so I, I think it's been a long time that we talk about how great it is, which it is great, of course. Absolutely, it is fantastic that programming brings in income. We are so fortunate to have a thriving recreation department, it's great. The Recreation Department manages many budgets. Our, um, our Village Our Voices had the 10K budget for that committee that Elise was on and Bridget was on and um, Elaine Haney was on. That was a great um, moment in time where that committee was formed. Um, there's been, there's a committee for the Memorial Day Parade that budget is managed by the Rec Department. Um, I think it's so important that our Rec Department be supported and that things like the cash preferred during Halloween, that really threw me, friends. That really threw me. I, 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 it really surprised me and it threw me. So that was the, the main impetus for my feelings about a Rec Advisory Committee. That aside, George makes an excellent point that we've lost the ability to have discussions on the floor and point out particulars and vote on things that should be changed in the budget. And while I 100% agree with Australian ballot and I 100% agree with how we're doing it, we need to change with that, like George said. We need to find ways 
to bring more community input as we go. And uh, in regards to the stipend, I would like to see if there's a question on the ballot or discussion throughout the year. Um, just to take myself back one more time to the Rec Advisory Committee component. I don't mind what that committee gets determined to be. I don't, I trust that those of you sitting at that table and Regina and the Rec Department can determine what that committee does. I'm just frustrated that we've not had it for seven years and this is an eighth year. So those are all my frustrations. Uh, those are my thoughts about the stipend as well. And thank you all so much for your time. Thank you, Annie. Arlen, are you good or? I'm still coming. No, all right. <laughs> you can have the final word. Um, oh, I just lost the again. No, you're uh, And as I said in my email, tough conversations, and I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, great conversations. Uh, George, I agree with you that there should be discussion. Um, the problem is it, it's really difficult. And then, um, it's, it's kind of interesting. We're talking about like um, some marginalized groups um, and, and trying to give everybody a voice. And I don't think putting the question on the ballot answers anything. If, if anything, we've discovered, and actually you wouldn't be, it's, it's not actually on the ballot, right? It's a separate question, very similar to what we did before. The problem is you can't get enough information, education, as Bridget spoke to it. Um, it just gives you a kind of yes or no. Um, and honestly, because we're talking about taxes, I don't think there's a person around here that will, will claim that they have never at some point in their life said, no, no more taxes, no more new taxes. Just, you know, that's, that's our, our, our goal to you is always don't raise our taxes. Um, I think this is, I think if you did get into public discussion, if you found a unique way, um, social media is not going to cut it. Um, some of these marginalized communities can't get on social media. Mm -hmm. um, from Port Forum, um, you know, anything within the internet, don't get me wrong, we're reaching way more people than we ever used to. Um, I don't know if we're still reaching them, some of these marginalized communities. Um, and I, and, and again, to go back to public discussion, I think you're going to get, I think you're going to get 50, 50. I don't think you're going to get an answer. I, I don't think they're going to point you in a direction. Um, I think this board is faced with one of the tough reasons that you guys all signed up for, which is you're going to, you're going to make a decision and you're going to get yelled at. Some people are not going to be happy with you. Other people are going to support you at Um, and the other thing that I found interesting is I was thinking you let the cat out of the bag, right? Okay. So we go to, let's, let's say we pick 6,500 only because I'm a little competitive and I like to be first. And if we go to 6,500, we're the first community to ever do it, but I'll, I'll, I'll go back to five because that's where we need to go. Um, I, I felt like you let, I, I feel like you let the cat out of the bag, right? We do 6,500, we're never going to pivot. But then I got thinking about it. It is a line item. I mean, technically, we could just reduce the budget and pull it out of there. So I guess we could pivot, and then we'd have to figure out how many years do we give it an opportunity to see if it changes the board, right? How many how many voting cycles do we go through before we pivot? So it's a big conversation. I could go either way. Um, a piece of me that says pull the trigger. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. Let's get yelled at for a little while. And see what happens. Thank you, Harlan. You gonna join us in the yelling? Okay. Never mind. I'll, I'll talk to you offline. No. <laughs> I'm standing behind Harlan. <laughs> Thank you, Harlan. All right. Uh, Raisa, got your hand in at just the last moment. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I couldn't get to the hand. Um, I completely support increasing the stipend, not to this amount and not to this way. I was a very strong supporter of merger. And then when that when it was clear that that was never gonna happen, I was an extremely strong supporter of separation. Um, I said at that time, and I meant it, 
if I'm paying the same amount of taxes, however, it's all staying in the city, I'm okay with that. I am having a real hard time with my money going to the town. However, looking at this budget, I'm not seeing that there was any attempt to start it from where we were only as a city and adding from there. So referring to the budget increase as 1.6%, it may be 1.5, I may have that wrong. That's not quite the case and it makes me, it makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable that a city council is saying, we're gonna add this as a line item to our budget and include in there an annual inflation increase. You know, I, I, I know how much you guys work you guys do. I can talk about my conversation with Raj, which took up way too much of his time, and I appreciated his time. You all do so much. That's not the question. The question is $25 plus an hour, which most people don't make in our community because that's what's considered the livable wage. That seems like an overreach. When I saw the 6,500, I viewed it as, this is smart. You ask for 6,500 because you're gonna get 3,000 and be really thrilled with it. But apparently that isn't the case. The case is you want 6,500. Now, you're not willing to wait a year from now, as George has suggested. And you want there to be an addition to that, an, an additional inflation increase each year. I also, I've, I've listened clearly to everything everyone has said. And I keep coming back to what Raj said about you know, it's always us and he's right. And all I keep thinking is, this is a real push for me to consider the outliers, to consider voting for the people who aren't part of quote unquote us. Because I think that right now we need a shakeup. It is very sad that George, with all of his institutional history, is leaving. That Dan, with all of his institutional history, and frankly, a view that is different than mine, is leaving. I understand them leaving. I completely do. There comes a point you want to get on with your life. But when I asked at the beginning, is this something that would be as an amendment or as part of a line item. This was why. I agree that there needs to be discussion. I agree that it's, um, it's not something that people will automatically understand, but considering how high our budget is over what we paid only to the city, adding this as a line item feels to me like you're trying to hide it. I know you're not doing that. It's been very clear. It's been all over Facebook. It's been in the in the packets. But you know, I I really believe this is something that should go to the community. And if the council doesn't believe that the community will have the council's best interest at heart, I think that says something about the relationship between the community and the council. Thank you. Thank you, Raisa. The only uh, couple clear pieces of clarification I just wanted to put out there. Um, you talk about a, an annual increase. That isn't guaranteed unless we put that into the charter, which would then be voted upon by the community. Uh, it would have to be discussed every single year by the board, approved of by the board, to then be approved of by the voters through the budget process. Um, so we here can't guarantee that in five years it would increase at the rate of inflation um, without that charter change. Uh, and then just with it being the city council stipends uh, within our charter, it, it's supposed to be its own unique line item within our budget so that that way it would clearly show what that, that stipend is. So it wouldn't be hidden among um, any other uh, purpose. So it wouldn't be within, say, the public works uh, paving budget so that nobody could find it. Um, so it does have to be its own unique line item, just so that you're aware. Thank you for that. My comment about the annual inflation rate is because that is stated in Raj's memo. So that's where I got that. Yep. And I realize that it's a separate line item. 
it not being an amendment, it's just like the council voted on this and passed is a little questionable. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Risa. So do I want to talk about the combined city budget? No. Bless you. Okay, there's no other hands up. So we will go on to business item 6B, a discussion and consideration of moving the annual meeting date and discussion on the annual meeting election and preparation schedule. Okay, let me find this. Uh, while you're, you're finding that, um, I do want to offer uh, a, a, uh, two apologies. One, I want to apologize that the community has not had an apology from the council or anybody on the council uh, for where we are and even needing to have this conversation. So for that first portion, I apologize. And the second apology here is the fact that when we put this schedule together, when we put out the, uh, the annual meeting happening, we did not look at a calendar um, that was include that was more inclusive than a, uh, a calendar that personally I would have grown up with throughout my entire life. And so I did not know uh, at that point in time that this was the first day of Passover. Um, moving forward, what we will be doing is we will be using a more inclusive calendar that will have more holidays that would be recognized, uh, more days of importance that would be recognized. And so just on behalf of, of myself, I think I can speak for the city council here broadly of offering my apology to the community for this oversight and so i am sorry for that as well okay so um thank you andrew so uh the memo points out some of that information and essentially um so because the charter now has um all of your voting done by australian ballot which we've talked about quite a bit tonight um the annual meeting itself really can be the voting day so this memo is recommending that you change the annual meeting to April 11th, which is uh, the date that everybody will be voting. And then with that, you've got to have your informational meeting 10 days prior to that. So the recommendation here is that um, the annual meeting uh, move to April 11th and the informational meeting happen the night before on the 10th. Um, the... Um, we're thinking that the best way to do the informational meeting is a completely online meeting uh, because the school will be hosting their informational meeting at the high school that prior night before. Um, uh, sorry, what else do I want to do here? Um, we also uh, just want to let folks know uh, we are aware that there used to be a much more fun community dinner event um, with the committees outside trying to explain what they did and, and uh, try to get some more folks to come into the room. Um, and we have looked into that logistically to figure out if we can make that happen. Um, and we certainly can't do it on the 10th. And we have investigated whether we can do it for some other kind of event in between now and then. And it just logistically isn't, isn't possible. Um, so that's why we're suggesting an online meeting for the informational meeting, because if folks really want to come, this room is not big enough. We can't be in the high school. And so online might be the best way to get the most uh, people to participate. Um, also, I will point out that um, for a lot of people um, in your consent agenda, you have uh, the concept of mailing um, ballots, if we mail ballots, a lot of people will be voting way earlier than April 10th. And so <laughs> the whole process is a little bit different um, and uh, changed at this point. Um, and really, perhaps at some point, we'll get some state changes, state statute changes that kind of identify this new future that we're in for prepping for um, local elections. I think that's it. Thank you, Regina. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? No, my, my, only, my only comment is if, you know, if we just saw with the, with the Board of Civil Authority, if we're going to move the operation over to CBE, probably it's too, obviously can't do it this year, but once you settle in over there, you might be able to have your, your kind of fun dinner over there. Certainly CBA, I'm sure, would be amenable to that. 
um, but it's too yeah. too soon. Yeah. But I think that's a good plan. The other portion as well, um, one of the nice things about doing it at the high school was also just that dinner side yeah. being frankly very inexpensive. Yeah. Whereas we don't have it in this budget that we know of at least to be able to recreate that and have some kind of private uh, catering entity as the school right now doesn't have the capacity to do those kinds of events yeah. anymore. But yes, absolutely. Would love to be able to get back to that point in time. No, well, you can do it. We'll get there. You can do it. We'll get there. You're not going to come back. No, I'm not going to be. I won't be part of it, but you can do it. Anything else from the council? Uh, Marcus, I see your hands up. <clears throat> Quick question based on how I read this memo, because the way that it's worded here, an informational meeting is required 10 days prior to the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. If you have it the night before, that's within 10 days. The way I read this, it sounds like it needs to be April 1st. Oh. Within 10 days. You can't, yeah, you have to have it within the 10 days of the vote. Okay. Just yep. wanted to yep. make sure I was reading it. Yeah, sorry, it's, that's com that's confusing in here. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that clarification. Um, and yeah, as a part of what Regina was talking about with the lack of alignment with current practice and capabilities to do mail-in ballots and yeah unfortunately i would entertain a motion okay i will move that the city council move the 2023 annual meeting from wednesday april 5th 2023 to tuesday april 11th 2023 to vote for the village officers and transact any business involving voting by australian ballot second thank you george thank you dan any further discussion Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Great, so that passed unanimously. And next up is something else. <laughs> this is just a minor. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, Chris and connector. This is the, the, all right, come on, Rick. This is a good thing. Rick's here. I'd be very happy to talk to you. <laughs> I'm thrilled that you're here for this. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, um, I could I can start us off if you'd like. Um, so essentially, we are ready to award the bid for phase two of the actual construction of the of the roadway itself. Um, you've got a lot of attachments here uh, in the memo, um, but essentially, uh, we have identified a a low bid and are recommending that you move forward on that um, on that bid award. Uh, I we are also identifying here in the amendment that there are a number of non participating items um, that the city will have to cover and some of that we don't 100% know what that cost is going to be yet particularly with the um, um, contaminated soils that have to be addressed. Um, but um, there are some other things which George, I uh, have excellent memory, knew that there were some of these bike racks and other kinds of yep. um, in-street amenities um, associated with that. So um, I'll leave it at that. So where we find ourselves is um, at the end of a trip that's lasted 12 <laughs> years a day. Yeah. Um, a little bit longer than that, but from the preliminary study, the scoping studies, the alternative analysis, the uh, environmental assessment, uh, the corrective action plan, the uh, design, the right of way acquisition, um, all of those process steps over the last 12 years have brought us to this point where we're ready to, to actually complete the work and actually do the construction. Um, and before I go into any other details, let me just say that, as you can imagine, a project like this, it's extremely complicated. Um, it's like a giant flywheel and it starts moving very slowly. And as we get closer to the end, it's moving very quickly. And Regina has joined us at a point where we're in this carousel, this flywheel moving very quickly and could easily have been thrown to the ground um, <laughs> when confronted with it or deftly stepped on and joined it, which she has. We've all been very impressed with how fast she's been able to catch up with where we all are after 12 years of focus on this project. So mm -hmm. you know, it's been really uh, awesome to watch. To, why we hired her. her to, exactly. Good choice. Um, so um, 
So we're at the point, as I say, we've got a, a, a bidder, a low bidder, um, and in our current bidding environment uh, over the last year and a half, almost two years now, um, to get a low bid that was lower than the engineer's estimate has been very rare the, over the last year and a half, two years, the bids have been significantly higher than the engineer's estimate. But in this case, it was actually 1.6% lower than the engineer's estimate uh, that two boys and King, the design engineers uh, prepared, which is great news uh, for us. Uh, this project is 100% funded, except for the things that we've talked about uh, um, by state and federal funds. So it's a part of the circumferential alternative projects, although we don't use that term anymore. Um, so the, the main work of this project is 100% funded uh, by state and federal funds uh, to, build the, to build the project. Um, uh, the bid has been completely analyzed based on VTRAN standards. And so, and you'll see in your package um, if you want to delve into it deeply, but um, there are multiple tests that a bid must go through um, and filters to make sure that there's no disadvantage, in this case to the city, to awarding that low bid. And the bid analysis, which is multiple pages of specifically looking at line item by line item of the bid, has determined um, both the design engineer's review and VTRANS concurs that uh, there is no, and the, the term of art here is no disadvantage to the city in, in, in issuing uh, and accepting this bid and issuing a contract to this contractor, which is the finding that you, you hope to find uh, with a, a low bid. So that's where we're at. Um, as Regina says, the, the one piece that's still um, unknown is because a portion of this work is along the historic railroad right of way, and the railroad over time used both coal and wood. Um, that emissions from those engines created uh, some contamination in the soil, mainly metals, arsenic, uh, for one. Um, and so uh, right now, the good folks at VTRANS <coughs> are examining what the city has done up to this point in terms of due diligence related to those contaminated soils. Um, our initial read is that the city through all this process over the last 12 years has done every single thing possible to mitigate uh, that. And so we're hoping that the findings from the good folks at VTRANS are that they will pay all or a large percentage of the cost of the disposal. Um, our initial read throughout the project leading up to this point, even before that finding was a hope for a 50-50 split. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we get a little bit more. If they came back and said there is no participation for the soils. That plus the bicycle racks, the bike boxes, uh, EV charging stations, some other thing that the, that the city wanted that aren't really considered under DTRANS as a part of a necessary part of the project um, for this type of funding. Um, the percentage would be about 3%, just a hair over 3% of the total project cost. Um, so again, very small percentage against uh, what the city will get uh, from this project. Uh, and so that's, that's where we're at at this point um, and uh, ready to go. As you may know, phase one of the project has already been completed. Um, and that was all the railroad work that happened this summer. So the, the reconstruction of every single crossing within the city limits um, that hadn't been upgraded recently. So short of north, the North Street crossing, which had been rebuilt. So yep. Central Street was rebuilt, Maple Street, Main Street, Park Street North, Park Street South, and South Summit Street crossing uh, were rebuilt. Uh, the West Street extension extension had been rebuilt a few years before. So um, that was phase one of the project, all new signals, all new crossing panels, um, and a lot of Railroad infrastructure was uh, work on the summer. Uh, so phase two is, is the road comes along behind. Uh, as you know, the road will start on Park. Uh, it will cross, traverse uh, the lands of McEwing, uh, Kalanges, uh, Mr. Knox, all uh, 
provided easements uh, to, to the city along with the railroad. Um, at Maple Street, there'll be a new signalized intersection. The railroad street will be completely reconstructed from Maple uh, to Maine. Um, and there'll be a new uh, signalized intersection at the intersection of the Crescent Connector and Park, uh, Park Street. So um, bike lanes uh, will be uh, on both sides of the road. So we'll have a, a bike lane connection all the way from uh, Park to Maine. Um, sidewalks, um, public parking will be a part of the project uh, as a part of the infrastructure and uh, the entire street route will be uh, lit. Uh, so uh, quite an improvement uh, for that stretch uh, to get you from uh, Park to uh, Maine. So that's where we're at and we're hoping that you agree that it's move ahead and <laughs> do the final, do the final step. <clears throat> I remember um, it was about nine or so years ago, we were having the conversation about the bonds for Briar and some other construction projects at this same time. And a staff member at that point in time had said, this is gonna be one real busy construction season, especially with the Crescent Connector coming in that this upcoming construction season. And here we are nine years later. <laughs> well, well, you were still uh, yep. a good predictor of the first, uh, <laughs> And future events because yep. right now we're teed up to do all the water line replacement on Main Street, oh, yep. the culvert replacement on Brickyard, yep. and the Crest Connector project. So oh, it'll still be a good time. It summer. will. So I'll make sure to repost that post from nine years ago to the Facebook yeah. community <laughs> to say it's going to be a very busy construction season again this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, this is absolutely fantastic. Thrilled that it's, it's happening. Can't wait for the for the Crescent Connector to come through. Um, George, Dan, I, I can I know how many times you've spoken about this. Uh, I, I well. this started for me. This started uh, with a meeting in the governor's office in 2011, and then probably I would say, were you were you with the Circ Alternative? Were you with the RPC with the Circ Alternative Task Force? It just started in 2011, and I think they were kind of wrapped up. I, I, I think I spent 100 hours putting <laughs> this beast through the Circa Alternative t Task Force because we had to go to every possible person in the state who could say no to us and convince them to say, I, I, it, but it was wonderful every single moment. Of it. <laughs> but yeah, this would be great. I'm going to reserve the right to make this motion, so you can ask oh, more yeah. questions, but it helped me put this puppy to bed here. <laughs> I was going to show somebody else if yeah. anybody tried. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, 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 I'm very happy to see this project moving forward now. Um, when I came on the board, uh, John Laja was the primary rep to the Regional Planning Commission. It was two, actually. It was Regional Planning Commission and the, the CCRPC was, you know, uh, MPO. MPO and Regional Planning, Metropolitan Planning, so much fun. And we combined. But anyhow... So I saw this from the get-go, starting up and the other projects all the way through down in Williston, and we had our group of, uh, it's a small group, because it was the communities that were actually, in, would have been impacted had the CERC been built. Yeah. So us, the town, Williston, Coles, Pepster. The CERC community. You know, that, that's it. You know, it was, it was uh, quite interesting, and, but we're finally here. <laughs> I, I will point out that 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 Colchester, their CERC alternative project was this complicated diamond intersection. Do you know, you, have you been kept keeping up on that? And that thing diverse, looks. Diverse. Our our project is way better than. This. They've started there, so they I don't started know. there. It's pretty cool. It's called the Diverging yeah. Double Diamond the Intersection. Diverging yeah. Double Diamond. Yeah, yeah. And uh, great name. It's, it is. It's going to be. A, it is. It, it does. It's going to be several <laughs> years, a, but a if you drive reptile. up by exit 16 on Route 7 and Route 2, it's combo. You'll see they've got concrete blocks. And they're digging away. Yeah. On the south side, to the bridge about toward the bridge about that side. So it's, it's not it is happening. The Memorial Crescent Connect. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure. But <laughs> things take time. I mean, up in up in Grand Isle, they've got a new drawbridge. Yeah. It's taken many many years, it but takes, it takes a long um, time. COVID didn't help. <clears throat> and it's it's taken a lot of tenacity, hard work mm -hmm. by, by certainly some by of you here in this room. Yeah. Those who are not in this room as well. Yeah. So it wouldn't be where it is without everybody who's been a part of it. Deeply appreciative and thankful. Yep. For all of you. Yep.
I'm not seeing any other questions, George. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Okay, I will um, recommend that the City Council award the Crescent Connector Phase Two project to the lowest bidder, Engineers Construction Incorporated, and authorize Hamlin Engineering to manage the construction phase phase of the project and authorize the City Manager to execute the contracts. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Those opposed say nay. Great, that passed unanimously, or you would have been voted off the board. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Thank getting you, Rick. late yeah. in the night, getting punchy. We'll see you this summer next to all the big yellow equipment. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. And Raj, you wanted to bring up the minutes? Yeah, a couple quick things in the minutes. Um, and I just found this one, um, page 115, or sorry, line 115. Um, I don't know, I just saw it, so I'm going to bring it up. Bridget um, is spelled with an I-T. It's Bridget uh, Meyer, and I know it's not how she spells her name. Uh, but more importantly, what I was bringing up the first time was part of um, line 104 in our conversation about the stipends. Um, just the word vision on page, line 104. I think it changes the meaning of what the discussion was. Um, I think the original word was aesthetic and then changed to appearance. I think vision in this context would refer to how the board sees the future of the community as opposed to what I think the conversation was actually about. So would you propose an amendment? So 104 change? I think Dan changed it to appearance. So I would go with that. That's good. In the final conversation. So I changed the word vision to appearance in the end of line 104. As well as on 115, Bridget, Bridget, B R I D G E T, yeah, not I T. Yeah, she probably like that. All right. Anybody have anything else? All I didn't name. Wait, yeah. So you'd like to make that motion to amend? Yes, I the... move to amend the minutes as described. I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah. Those opposed say nay, pass unanimously. And that will bring us into the consent agenda. Will we approve the consent agenda? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Great. And so now we will go into the reading file and board member comments. The only thing I wanted to mention, uh, the Board of Civil Authority met right before this meeting, for those of you who weren't present for that, and uh, made the decision that voting will no longer happen for this voting in April and for this upcoming year of 2024. Voting will happen at CVE, so Champlain Valley Expo, and will not be happening at the high school. Uh, this should allow for more parking. Uh, in terms of accessibility, the parking will be on a flat surface. You won't have to go up a ramp. It will be heated and or air conditioned depending on the temperature. Um, it won't be in a school. So that way, in term, uh, from a school safety standpoint, you won't have uh, guests going into the school. And so that crowd control will be able to be managed significantly better, especially as uh, in case you did not hear about the, the um, school shooting hoax that happened today, that dynamic would not be played out um, during voting. So be on the lookout. It will be different, but it will be a, a, an exciting change and hope that it, it goes well. Does any member have anything else? Move we adjourn? Second. All in, wow. <laughs> yeah. Quick, all in favor. That's what else you have. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Have a good night, everybody.